th- I don't think he's set up as a character who really likes wax being poured on his body. But man, no, he doesn't like it. At but first. man, does he have orgasms from it? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Sincast, presented by CinemaSins. All right, everybody, welcome to the Sincast. This is Chris Atkinson from CinemaSins, joined as always by the voice of CinemaSins, Jeremy Scott. Hello! And from Music Video Sins, Barrett Share. Hello! God, that was so fucking anticlimactic. What was the two hellos? The two hellos. I feel like I derail it so often by doing something. (laughs) 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 Ah, Anyway, here we are. We are are, here. We are all here. Yeah, you know, we can't come up with different ways to say hello after 150 something plus (laughs) podcasts. Come on. Some days it's just going to be Some days it's going to be bland. I'm sorry to say. Speaking of which, yesterday as I was going through this, and I I sent you guys some of those stats and all that stuff, but we've been doing this right at three years. Like uh, next week, I think it's three years. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I got a little emotional. You got a little emotional? I got a little emotional Mm -hmm. yesterday thinking about it because like- because I started thinking, like, three years, it's a long time, and we've been consistent all the way through. Started off in different cities, and now, you know, built out the studio and all that stuff. But then, like, all those, we got a lot of people that wrote in and, like, said how much this means to them in different ways. Like, yeah. Either keeping them awake when they're driving or something like that. Yeah. Or, like, the stuff that we talk about, they really connect to. Some people, one person just recently said, like, uh, you educate me and entertain me or something mm-hmm. like that. Uh, yeah, it's, it, this is this is good stuff, man. This is really good stuff. And the fact that we, you, know, you pull up that world map and there's people in fucking Belarus and like, uh, yeah. Cayman Islands. I don't know. I'm coming up. There's weird. what? Like Botswana. I don't know. There's 160 something countries, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. It's and wild. Obviously, uh, more, it's, I guess, more listened to in the English speaking countries mm-hmm. like England, Australia, you know, Canada, uh, Canada, mm-hmm. all those places. But uh, but yeah, it's really nice when we see all these other places in the world. Yeah, man. That's crazy. To There's think. one person in Iran that has listened to us. Yes, exactly. That's crazy <laughs> to me to that think that some... probably risked his life to do that. <laughs> That's crazy to me to think that. Yeah, definitely. We got to be illegal over there, right? <laughs> For sure. Uh, it's crazy to me to think that somebody's at the Wailing Wall listen to us or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, that's nuts. Hopefully yeah. not at the actual wall. right, right. Yeah, they Just, probably have like rules. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Behavior yeah. rules. You for... definitely have those rules. Um, but uh, today we're gonna go back on the road trip. Road Whoa, trip. Shotgun. On the road again. The most time-honored tradition of all: the road trip. Oh, the places you'll go. Are we there yet? No. 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 And we're gonna go to Oregon. Yeah, the uh, the other state that people get pissed off if you say wrong for some reason, like Nevada. What is it supposed to be? It's Oregon, Oregon, not yeah, Oregon. Not, yeah, some people say Oregon. Well, yeah. and then there was that guy that emailed or commented and said it was it's Oregon, Oregon. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Oh, Almost like O R G A N. Like it's like right. exactly Oregon. Well, this is okay. I lived in Baltimore for six years, and nobody who lives there calls it Baltimore. They all call it Balmer. But it's not because. They like having a catchy name. They're just fucking lazy. They're they tired of saying Balmer. 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 Yeah. Really? I've never heard that. Anyone living in Baltimore right now, please chime in. Hmm. Please wow. correct we, me we... if I'm wrong. I, this was the 70s and, and early 80s <laughs> when I lived there. But but we liked to correct people like pompous dicks. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't say Baltimore. It's called <laughs> Balmer. Barrett yeah, and I have a friend who's like very militantly Baltimore. And he I don't think I've ever heard him say that. That's interesting. I Well, I went through this when I lived in Louisville because it's it's Louisville. It's not Louisville and it's not Louisville. Louisville and it's not <laughs> Louisville. It's Louisville. Right. And you get used to that, and then when somebody calls it like Louisville or Louisville, you're like, "What the fuck?" Actually, if you go to Indianapolis <laughs> up there, they all say Indianapolis. No, <laughs> 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 That's funny. <laughs> oh, Oregon, Seattle's hat. Yes, <laughs> I've never been to Oregon. Bull- it would be be boots. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> Seattle is Oregon's Can- hat. Canada is, is, is Seattle's hat. I don't hat. fucking know. I went to Seattle once for three days. That's it. That's my Northwest exposure. None of us have been to Oregon, right? 
I have never been to I've Oregon. I've never been. No. I really want to. I hear it's Seattle's pants. I've Yes, exactly. <laughs> I've only been to, what, I guess, two western states. Mm-hmm. California. Nevada and California. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've I've missed out. I need I need to go up there though. I know a lot of people who live up in Washington and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And then I would if I went to Washington, I would go down to Portland because. And we should go up to Vancouver to see our buddy uh, Jeremy. Yeah, man. There's all sorts. Actually, that's what we should do is we should go to Portland and then we have an excursion up to see Jeremy in Vancouver and an excursion down to Seattle to see Laurent. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. Or we just you know make those guys both come to Portland and meet us there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's not bad. But anyway, yeah, yeah. I hear uh, it's great. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh our first movie on the list is antitrust speaking of <laughs> speaking of beautiful <laughs> why is this set there why is the microsoft ripoff company set it, it live in probably portland? something like that you remember tim yeah, robbins is like evil bill gates well here's the funny thing i don't know if i've seen antitrust <laughs> the the we were talking about it earlier before the podcast before the microphones were on and all that but uh, there's another movie called Firewall that came out with Harrison Ford. I have seen that. I don't think I've seen Antitrust. I remember it coming out, and I remember actually uh, as a projection of starting Antitrust. I don't think I ever saw it. Though. It is. Did you see The Circle with Emma Watson? I never saw that. No, it's the exact same movie. It's basically the same fucking yeah. movie. He gets he gets Ryan Philippe in one mm-hmm. of his most stellar dramatic turns. He is a mm-hmm. blank ass slate man. He's such a great <laughs> coder. That Bill Gates, I mean Tim Robbins with right. glasses, comes and recruits him to work at Not Microsoft. Mm-hmm. And he's wowed by the campus and the napping lounge chairs mm-hmm. and the yada yada and the whatnot. And he's dating Claire Forlani, who's lovely. Yes. Um has any has any has anybody I don't know, I don't know how to say this without sounding <laughs> wrong. She's lovely, but it feels like she was almost never in a good movie, except maybe Mystery Men. Me Joe Black? Yeah. yeah she, me Joe Black's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, me and, Joe Black, and, I saw it once, but it felt like it's long. Work. And even yeah, though I would, I would never call The Rock good, The Rock is. I would. Oh, I always forget she's in that. Yeah. Well, she's not in it very. No, no. So she's Carla, right? She's the, the prom queen. She's no. Nicholas Cage. No, she's Sean Connery's daughter. She's his daughter. Who plays his wife? It's Vanessa, uh, Marceau. Vanessa Marceau. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Who um, was on uh, Ve- Las Vegas. Winners go and home and fuck the General prom Hospital. queen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so Lisa so- was the prom queen. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets recruited. He's working for this company. And then, of course, he starts to figure out something shady. Something's happening. fucked up. Microsoft may be doing shady things. Not Microsoft, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen the commercials for this tv preacher who sells the mineral spring miracle spring water no he actually doesn't sell it he sends it to you for free along with some other bullshit but like he's interviewing people in churches and one one guy always corrects himself he's like my whole life turned around when i drank the miracle water i mean the spring water because <laughs> i think legally he has to call it spring water not miracle water oh and they've been coached how to speak but he doesn't give a rat's ass but they kept it in the commercial <laughs> yes because he's the people he's reaching with this shit are flat earthers and the other oh my God, oh yeah yeah log cabin types um <laughs> <laughs> sorry um, you know the lumberjacks and the militiamen <laughs> and then you know a thriller ensues will he get the information out to the right people in tongue and will evil bill gates crush his larynx we don't know yeah. but we do is claire forlani really his girlfriend or was she a plant all along she was a plant all along mm-hmm. uh this this is a tv movie and yes. that somehow had a theatrical release with name stars. Hey, Rachel Lee Cook's in it too, right? She yeah, is. she's like another employee there that are like a former hacker friend who helps him hack his way out. I, don't uh, know. I mean, they're all, there's a lot of hacking. It is one of the worst movies I think I've ever have, seen. Have you ever seen The Circle? Did you ever watch it? No, that? because it looked so bad. And then the reviews came out and it was like, yeah, it's not so good. The Circle is much better than Antitrust. <laughs> That's oh, there all we go. It's well, but go. it's basically the apple version of this fucking movie okay yeah, yeah and so just like apple is probably better than pcs or microsoft mm. anyway it's the same thing with that movie. interesting yeah uh but yeah antitrust sucks um, do not do this then on the heels of the success of basic instinct body of evidence came out yeah. madonna, madonna and willem dafoe and willem da- this is the one with the candle wax it right? is the candle wax one yeah i watched this because i was a horny teenager i did too and I remember thinking not because I was, I was a horny teenager. Though. <laughs> no, not you. I'm you, above that. You just love Madonna. <laughs> That's right. Um, and boy, it wasn't as good as um, 
most of these other movies like this I watched because I was a horny teenager. Oh, it's the worst fucking movie like ever. It has none of the campy fun that Bas- Basic Instinct has. Yeah. It's- this is like what Fifty Shades would later become, right? <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Because, because, uh, like, Willem Dafoe, like, there's points in there where, like, I just don't. I don't think he's set up as a character who really likes wax being poured on his body, but man, no, he doesn't like it. At but first. man, does he have orgasms from it? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, howdy! Oh man, does he ever come? <laughs> I like when he sits with him. He ever come? <laughs> Oh, um, my God. Madonna whew. fucks everybody in this movie. Yeah, she does. But, yeah, you'll only remember the candle wax scene. Yes, yes. Um, it's, it's light BDSM. It's the, uh, like, tying up and stuff like that. But this is right around. Wasn't Madonna do, having her... Speaking of Miley, <laughs> wasn't she having a <laughs> sex phase Oh, she was way past point? that. I mean, yeah. but, but, yeah, so she was still in that. I mean, this well, was 93. She put out a book she, called yeah, sex. she put out a book called Sex, and it was a right around this time. Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm saying, is this is where she was totally fine just being naked all over. Yeah, it was fact, Bedtime she, Stories and Truth or Dare Yeah, and all Truth or Dare stuff. was yeah, the yeah. other one that I was about, yeah, because that was the concert film where she decided, well, it's just, you know. Yeah, it's a terrible fucking movie, yeah. too. And I like Madonna's music. But Doesn't like, she, like, blow a bottle backstage? Or is that... Yeah, I'm, uh, I think that's right. Yeah, something like that. It's been what's, a while. What's kind of what's kind of interesting is you would think <laughs> you would think around that time, Madonna was like going through that like she was twenty two or twenty three or whatever. But she, I think she was in her thirties oh, by yeah, the time yeah. that, oh, yeah. that yeah, yeah. came around and everything. So she was still like trying to amp up that you know that sexual energy and yeah, everything. Yeah, she was that sex she positive, man. Like she, she wasn't ashamed about anything. Nope. She'd she'd be out there and doing whatever. Just like in this movie, she's. In compl- she's the dominatrix, quote unquote, uh, not formally, I don't think, but that's kind of her thing. She likes to be in control. And, you know, she was in control of her own sexuality. She was the template for somebody like Miley or Britney Spears or Christina Aguilera or something like, like that. Who all did it like well earlier yeah, than, yeah, than yeah. she did yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, man, yeah, body of evidence. Uh, That's a shitty movie. It's a really, really bad movie. Oregon, you're 0 for 2. I will, I will <laughs> die on the hill to say that Madonna is a competent actress uh, yeah but she's not in this movie i do i will take issue with that but also i like how we're scoring oregon <laughs> alphabetically right <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um i don't where's madonna a good actress i'm not i'm not saying you're wrong i just i fresh off having seen a few minutes of evita and a few minutes of a league of their own and i hey, and she's pretty good in a league of their own isn't yeah, she yeah she is she's oh yes she's yeah she's got a bit part in that though. yeah i mean of course she's the she's the playing sex Madonna. crazed uh um, wisecracking new yorker yeah. she's playing um uh, herself like where did where did she act in a way that you were like wow she really stretched she really uh, evita she totally stretched for that yeah i think she's swept away movie. swept away yeah mm-hmm. uh you think she's off on that movie in evita yeah yeah really well, I th- yes, I didn't like that movie one bit. I didn't like the movie either. I thought she was good in it. I thought Banderas was better than her. That was my takeaway was, wow, he's yeah. a really good singer. And with her, she just seems so wooden. Okay. Her singing has never been the best thing about her music. Agreed. So, so yes, I agree with you. Her singing, <laughs> even compared to Antonio Banderas, is, is not on par. I think her acting, though, overall in that movie... Uh, I liked stuff like Who's That Girl on Desperately Seeking Susan. I thought she was really good in Dick Tracy. Um, So I think, I'm not saying she's, you know, world class or anything like that. I think she's a competent actress. Okay, that's fine. Uh, This this movie notwithstanding. She's not like what we saw earlier, Brett Favre and (laughs) There's Something About Mary. That's right, Mary. You know I'll always be true true to you. you. Oh, man. Uh, next one. I, you know, it'll be interesting to see what everybody thinks of this. Uh, Coraline, which I actually very much liked, uh, <laughs> when it came out. I don't remember much about it, but I did see it and I did like it. This is not a kid's movie. Well, no, no you, tr- <laughs> oh, you took your son? No, no, no. I haven't shown it to him yet, but, uh, when I watched this, for whatever reason, I was thinking more, maybe a little nightmare before christmas but like That's... i figured it was more of a kids movie this is neil gaiman right yeah mm-hmm. um and it's fucked up <laughs> it's fucked up and that's the thing again i don't know who to blame here i don't blame him <clears throat> maybe the trailer co- company because i went in expecting nightmare before christmas yeah 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 and i got my i took my wife 
we were all like, ah, oh, you know, <laughs> what's this? What's this? And we came out going, <laughs> I've seen some shit, man. Yeah, but I do stuff. remember thinking it was good. Yeah, and that oh sure, yeah. I, I just it, never watched it again. It's it's excellent. I re- and I think it may have even gotten a animated Oscar nomination too. I think it's uh, at it least did. Uh, uh, best animated feature production um, and best animated feature. Yes, yeah. So. Uh, Henry Selick uh, of uh, Nightmare Before Christmas fame yep. is on this, even though Tim Burton's name completely overshadows his is yeah. Tim Burton uh, involved in this no oh he did in nightmare before christmas yeah, I'm sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah it's it's called tim burton's nightmare before christmas even though Henry right, Selleck right, yeah. <laughs> and 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 then i think uh Selleck went on to do james and the giant peach mm-hmm. right after that uh but Coraline, yeah i remember this being really good i really like the animation style in this and uh i remember just going man that was really good and then it just completely went out of my head afterwards no it's yeah. really good uh it's got like you said great animation and the story is really interesting uh you just have to be kind of set up for it it's it's very macabre it's very dark um we're talking about like ripping people's eyeballs out and stitching their mouths shut and everything but yeah. it's done in this alternate universe yeah so it's kind of safe from it but it interacts with the real world uh so yeah it's it's very interesting it doesn't have the whimsy or like the 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 levity of something like nightmare before christmas but uh it definitely has like the the darkness and the mm-hmm. the 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 crazy crazy stories yeah the, the creature features uh then we have gus van sant's drugstore cowboy uh oh, wow. matt Dillon uh, yeah. uh in this i haven't seen this in a while but i remember this being like a like almost goofball funny kind of like it's got some drama to it but yeah no it, it does have what I think it's a drama more that yeah. has goofball moments. It's got real it. goofball moments, like <laughs> yeah. stuff you don't normally see in dramas right. or in this. And the and he's a it's he a drug dealer? That's what it is, right? Well, he's an addict. I think he deals a little bit on the side, and some of it is is like heroin, some of it's coke, some of it's speed, that kind of thing. And it's an autobiographical. It's based on an autobi autobiography, mm-hmm. um, where the the real guy actually I think survived through all this stuff um and uh it, it it's crazy stuff because he describes candidly being an addict and being at the low lows and you know doing whatever you have to do to get a fix and then coming out of it and then being dragged back down into that world and all that stuff mm-hmm. eventually he gets ends up being shot um, oh yeah yeah so uh yeah it's a it's a really well acted i remember matt Dillon being very convincing as the uh as the protagonist you know some of these stories you ever see jesus's son you remember that that movie had Billy Crudup in it? Um, yes, but it's based on uh, a, a, a like a memoir by like a famous writer. I forget the guy's name, but that one had these moments of of goofballdom too. Mm-hmm. Because to survive something like addiction like that, like you really have to have some sort of a sense of humor and some sort of sensibility of like you know some of this stuff was patently absurd some of it was really dark and really dangerous but some of it was also kind of funny you know mm, yeah and when you get something like uh when aronofsky did requiem for a dream that really didn't have those moments in there maybe a couple in there but like there's not a whole lot of moments where you come up for air yeah, like you do in jesus no son in this levity one. in requiem for a dream <laughs> it's just all stuffing you down I mean, into a hole it did tip its hand with the title <laughs> yeah. requiem for a dream yes. if you went in looking for levity <laughs> yeah it also tipped its hand in the ass to ass scene <laughs> <laughs> yes it did it tipped its ass, it tipped its ass. <laughs> finally i was like man i was like laughing my ass off all the way through requiem for a dream until that scene yeah, came like up. oh <laughs> this has been a sick joke the whole time <laughs> <laughs> um the drugstore cowboy is is good and worth watching yes it is um i must be close to gus van zandt's first movie right? nah he i think he came out with even cowgirls get the blues oh uh, yeah he had uh no, my own private idaho that was after it, he did one movie called mala noche oh so both even cowgirls and uh my own private idaho came after this my own private idaho is 91 even cowgirls get the blues was 93 this was 89, 89. so this is his second uh feature has 100 percent on rotten tomatoes yeah wow eight out of ten yeah it's it's good gus van sant made some pretty good stuff he sure did. uh has has made some pretty good stuff um just so you know the infinity war video that we posted two and a half hours ago already has more comments than the incredibles 2 video from last jesus year. i can't wait yeah i can't wait to see what it looks like <laughs> once they count it all up yeah by midnight tonight uh it should be yeah 
Um, then we have the, the edge of 17. And remember we had one, what was it in Nebraska? Oh yeah. No, it was Ohio. It was Ohio. Ohio <laughs> that uh, was not the one. I got but, so excited. But, I was like, yeah, but I this is the one, this is the Haley Steinfeld one. <laughs> this is really good. This one, uh, this one came out a couple of years ago and it, I feel like they marketed it terribly. Yeah, yeah I agree. And, uh, they ended up like sort of was it uh, in the holidays like november somewhere around there they yeah s- november 18th was they the- stashed this movie and it had no chance to I, I think if they had come out with this in like march or april or something like mm-hmm. that right around where you know like school's about to get out and all that would have maybe gotten a little bit of an audience but still i guess it's still kind of a hard sell mm-hmm. but i was there from the moment that that trailer you know came out it was just so funny there's so many funny things in it and then you watch it and it's like oh it's a little bit different from what i saw on the trailer but it's still really good the yeah. trailer kind of sells you a straight up comedy mm-hmm. and it's got more depth than that mm. um i've seen this movie three or four times um we were watching something the other day yesterday and Haley steinfeld was on a my wife was watching E News or something. Mm-hmm. My wife goes, "Oh, hey, it's that girl I like." And I was like, "Oh yeah, there's she's that like, yeah, girl from, 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 like, from, the, from that one movie." And I was like, "Oh, Pitch Perfect three And she was, or, and she's like, "No." And I was like, "Pitch Perfect 2. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, I got to True Grit, and that was the one that she was thinking of. Uh, but no, this movie's fantastic. Everybody in it is great. Um, even the actor who ultimately the the video artist that ultimately is her love interest mm-hmm. by the end. Uh, I can't remember that actor's name, but I remember he stood out to me the first time I saw it as he's great. Like he's going to be be great and stuff for a good while. Uh, I can't remember. Is him. it Hayden Setso or played Seto? Irwin? Yeah, Irwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's great. Um, her mom. Who plays her mom? Kira Setto. Kira Setto. Yeah, she's great. And then you have uh, Haley Lou Richardson who showed up uh, later in uh, Split. Split. Yeah, uh, who's really good in it too. She's the best friend. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, her brother's great. I love the dynamic between he, her brother and her uh, because it feels real, like a real sibling relationship. A lot of movies give you these sibling relationships that are either entirely antagonistic or entirely lovey-dovey, when reality, for me at least, is uh, growing up with my brother, it was kind of 50-50 of each. Mm-hmm. Um, and this movie does a good job of they each get to vent and to explain why they hate each other, and then they kind of come to realize, oh, we're not so different after all. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I really, really like yeah. this movie. Yeah, Woody Harrelson uh, stealing it for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. You can do teachers... This movie and Thomas Hayden Church and Easy A mm-hmm. yeah. nailed the teacher dynamic of somebody who actually listens to a talented student or a student that that shows promise, but doesn't go to the pervy side and doesn't go to. Well, and it it's, it's a male female dynamic, yeah. but it's not that. But and, also doesn't tolerate shit. Yes, right. Well, especially Woody Harrelson in this well, movie. Yeah. <laughs> but even Thomas Hayden Church is like, <laughs> yeah. so what is it with this outfit? Like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They're, they're willing to talk to the student as people. Um, which I think makes a difference. I mean, we don't have enough teachers like that, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, this movie's and, fantastic. And Woody's tough on her, man. Woody doesn't take no shit. Well, yeah, because yeah. she even <laughs> says my dad died, and he was like, I think you can only use that excuse for like a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, you're interrupting my lunch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting on this egg salad sandwich all day. <laughs> and as you're alluding to, though, yes, that is the type of relationship that in a lot of movies, the screenwriter always wants to go, oh, wouldn't it be like like dramatic and interesting if like he like wanted to have sex with her Mm -hmm. or something like that and you're like no no not (laughs) no just no stop this is the relationship this is the dynamic (laughs) we like this yeah it's uh a movie i really enjoyed that i don't think many people have seen i can't think of the name of it Kristen stewart is in it she's young um and she is raped at a party and can't find a way to tell anyone and doesn't want to be around students. So at lunch, she goes into the art teacher's room and it's Steve Zahn. Ah. Uh, and he plays exactly this kind of teacher where he can see that she's got talent and pain and he wants to nurture the good and not tolerate the bullshit. And so like, he's like, all right, well, if you want to sit in here and eat your lunch, you're going to do some art while you're in here. Hmm. This is not like a playground. This is not a lunch room. So he starts pulling the artist out of her. Um, again, I've seen this movie twice and I can't remember the name of it. It's got one of those generic names, like only the brave. Um, <laughs> and I can't remember anybody else that's in it, but those two, but he was another one of these teachers on film that, but it goes right in that class you're talking about with these two. Speak. Huh? Speak. Speak. That's it. 
<laughs> no kidding, man. That's, that's as fucking generic. Yeah, as come on. Can. You can't Google that shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> speak movie. Yeah, I, if I put in speak, Google's going to come up with Google speak. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh, interesting. I want to see that. I bet that's, uh, I bet that's pretty I good. I bet you Jonathan's seen it. D.B. Sweeney's in that. Uh, then we have the remake of John Carpenter's The Fog. Yeah. Um, God damn. Have you seen this movie? Yeah. Is this one from the 80s? No, it's 2005. This was 2005. The first one was 1980. Had Jamie Lee Curtis in it. That's the only one I've seen. Yeah. This one, 2005, has Maggie Grace in it. Oh. And, um, and, uh, Selma Blair and Tom Welling. Um, What the fuck is Tom Welling from Six to Midnight? Um, <laughs> Tom Welling is Supernatural. Oh, he was in uh, Smallville. Smallville, Smallville. Yeah, 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 not Supernatural. They're the same show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Supernatural and Superman, same thing. Uh, but no, this movie has a three point six on the IMDb, a well deserved three point six. Yikes! Um, who, brought, who brought us this treasure? Was it Rupert Rob Wainwright? Zombie? Rupert oh. Wainwright, who did Stigmata. He's done uh, a bunch of music videos too. Yeah, he's done a bunch of music videos. Um, Stigmata, though. <laughs> 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 oh talk about a movie that's been lost to time man. well yeah. that's because it came it just came on the heels of all those other better movies <laughs> right. that were like that, that stir of echoes and sixth sense and all that shit Devil's like, we got patricia arquette over here <laughs> she got blood in her hands if I, I i think i recall that the main selling point for the fog was that maggie grace got into like a bikini or something like that oh really and like you're like okay because I'll watch you, it you pick a foggy day to get into a bikini you do <laughs> it wasn't maybe it wasn't a bikini but it was something where they were like ass prominent shot you oh know like God. that type of thing i'm surprised we haven't had a crossover film yet the mist versus the fog <laughs> well that's what i was about to get at i don't know which story came first stephen king's the mist or if the fog came because fog was 1980 mm-hmm. um and the mist was in that collection of short stories was it uh different seasons i I can't keep those straight um but uh but both of them have uh yes a fog or mist that have things inside them Mm -hmm. that uh come out to kill people and then this one it's spirits i believe or something like that uh yeah the movie's horrible (sighs) 3.6 i'm kind of surprised that it's that low yeah that's that's pretty low. but it, but it's well deserved mm-hmm. yeah the movie sucks very ass. bad uh okay here's one of the all-timers and i still haven't seen this movie freddy got fingered oh jesus oh jesus <laughs> tom, tom green tom green, oh, tom green. Oh, jesus. if you don't remember do, have you seen it yes uh if you don't remember tom green because his peak was what right around turn right, of the century right around when this movie yeah, came out right yeah. here this was uh, the end this was the yeah, it was totally the end because well, he had I mean, the Tom Green show on. Tom Green like was was so famous that he nearly well did he marry Drew Barrymore? Yeah, he dated he, her. I don't know. He if they dated married. her for oh, for a while, and then I think they even maybe got married or something. But I like, think they may have. They were in Charlie's Angels there for a second too. Yeah. So he had this surrealist type of thing where he would do stunts and things that uh, you see like Russell Brand do these days, or like you know shock comics basically. Yeah. Um, and. I thought it was funny. I thought his show was generally funny, mm-hmm. but there's a limit to how much he can take. And there's a reason that Euro Trip only ha- or a road road trip only had him in there for you yeah, know, a few scenes. Yeah. Watching an entire thing, this has got uh, Rip Torn in it too as his dad. Uh, he 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 takes it. It's it's an hour and a half of his comedy concentrated. There's a, a scene where he jerks off a horse, like literally. Mm. There's a scene where uh, where like he crawls in like a a deer carcass. And there's a, a scene, the famous scene is the sausages scene. Do you remember this one? Yes. Where he's like, he's... Daddy, would you like some sausages? Daddy, would you like some sausages? And he's got sausages hanging from all over the room, mm-hmm. and he's playing a keyboard. And that part is kind of funny, but like the, the rest of it, the, the rest of it, it's not funny in context, because you're already sick of his shit by then. It's yeah. funny, I liked Tom Green f- for a, a while. Uh, longer than i maybe should have uh like i even watched some of his like talk show because he had a talk show in canada that then i think hit mtv yeah yeah um but if you look back his shtick was largely being an asshole and filming people's reactions to it yeah seeing how far he could go before someone would snap not the way the impractical jokers do it um 
I don't know if you guys have seen much of that show, but I've that show is super innocent mm -hmm. uh, in the way that it fucks with people. Um, even Borat is more of a dick to people than that show. Mm. But there's a funny video when he was dating Drew Barrymore of him in a restaurant. This went viral. I think I wrote yeah, about it on I Real SEO this. where somebody came in with a camera and just did Tom Green to him and Drew Barrymore. Oh, like, yeah. Hey, Tom, how's it going? You mind <laughs> if I join you? What are you guys having? And they were like, hey, we're trying to have a private life, blah, 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 blah. And the point was, well, yeah, so was well, everybody else that you film, motherfucker. It's exactly how I feel about all of that shit, mm -hmm. even in Practical Jokers. Yeah. I, I mean, I know it's a little bit more innocent and everything, but in general, don't we all just go out and hope we don't get fucked with most of the time? Yes. And, and like when people, when you're, when you've got like a very set, like things you got to do and all that, and then somebody starts just doing some shit because of some laughs or whatever, I start really empathizing more than I should maybe with these subjects. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so like I could never get into Tom Green and I could, and it's funny, I got into Borat because I felt like there was a point mm -hmm. to the whole thing. Well, I do think he has more of a point than Tom Green did. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, Tom Green was, it was all about him. Uh, Drew Barrymore and Tom Green were married for about four or five months uh, okay, in 2001. Yeah. But, uh, it's the same thing with when punked was a thing mm -hmm. for a while there. Like, like I can, I can sort of get on board when it's a celebrity or whatever, cause fuck them. But like, uh. Even then, I was just kind of like that. That poor ass Zach Braff, man. Oh no, yeah, that <laughs> one. Didn't he hit a kid? He did. He, yeah. Did he actually hit? He threatened to hit. He did. Oh, really? They didn't show it oh, on oh, the, my God. the thing, but like, I mean, it made it made it look like his like you know was it Porsche or something got something got wrecked. Yeah, you know? yeah. Or got destroyed, and of course he's going to be pissed <laughs> off about that. Yeah. Of well, and it's not comedy, man. It's just lying. It's like right. It's just yeah. lying. Yeah. yeah. That's not funny. No, when Borat does, or when Sasha Baron Cohen does it, it's to expose something that was already there and yeah. to bring that out. There's, like you said, there's a point to it. There's no point to Tom Green. It's, it's him being silly for silly's sake and then implicating somebody else in At that. At least for, the for jackass guys were fucking with their own bodies. Yeah, yeah. they're fucking with themselves. Like, yeah, exactly. They weren't throwing well, like pool balls at other people's nuts <laughs> yeah. who were just random <laughs> passerbys. Yeah. That's, true to an extent i guess but they still fucked with each other a bunch when they weren't prepared for it and yes yeah and dude's parents who were yeah, always yeah, in yeah, that's right too. bam margera yeah, yeah it was a thing uh but yeah freddie got fingered written and directed by tom green starring tom green. listen if if you want to youtube or google a few scenes from that movie there's some funny stuff there mm -hmm. but don't watch the entire movie it's, it's crazy it's man you look back at 2001 comedies they're all they all got this sort of feature to them and i can't really quite put my finger on it <laughs> I, I wasn't trying to pun there uh but but there's something about it like if you show me any frame from a comedy in 2001 i can tell you it's 2001 wow yeah because it's there's a certain light like colorful vibe to all of those yeah. like those josie and the pussycats and mm -hmm. you know that watch josie and the pussycats was like 99 or some shit but i think it was 2001 <laughs> um but yeah they all have that like colorful bright vibe and i think freddie got fingered was one of those daddy would you like some sausages <laughs> <laughs> uh on to the classic the goonies Ah, uh, yes. I still haven't ever seen... No, I'm just kidding. Richard Donner. Yeah. Um, I, can't, I can't watch it. You, you can't, can't watch it? I can't watch this movie. Oh. They're constantly talking over each other. They're constantly shouting. I understand. I liked it when I was a kid. I can't watch it anymore. It's too... It's like everything is, is at 11 the entirety of the time. And I... Just calm it down for a second, guys. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, it, I just can't watch it. Uh, well, I, I can respect that. Yeah. Um, I hate you. No, no, mm -hmm. no I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. uh, Spielberg involved with this? Yep. He's a producer. I was going to say, it's one of the Spielberg and his feeling us movies ever. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> at the very beginning of it, there's all sorts of just very Spielberg esque things. Yeah. You know, like kids on bikes. Kids on bikes. <laughs> um, and, uh, and of course, the kid from Temple of Doom is in there. Oh, and, yeah. Um, and, uh, but yeah, and a really uh, young teenage Josh Brolin is in mm -hmm. this. Oh, man. Uh, you forget about how long his career has actually been. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this was Indiana Jones for kids. I think that's sort of how this was sold. Sure. Um, uh, kids uh, go into an attic and find like a, a treasure map from a pirate 
and they think, oh, we can we can follow this map and totally find that gold and everything. And uh, you know, they end up uh following it and going down and going on this uh adventure, but then in, in the but because it's a movie they have to stumble in on some uh some crooks who murder mm-hmm, a guy mm-hmm. and uh, it's uh ann ramsey from throw mama from the train yeah she played uh, a great i guess i guess she's dead she did yeah she is okay she probably i think she died in like 1990 or yeah, something she died a long time ago yeah no she played that role perfectly yeah she yeah. did the grumpy she old played it lady. in all the movies she was in but she played it great oh yeah yeah um but this, this movie's oregon as fuck by the way this is astoria so it's right on like the, oh yeah and uh, another place that fans have ruined for the people that owned the house, and they basically had to stop living there and mm-hmm. sell it off. And just like the four poor folks in Albuquerque from Breaking Bad, mm, man. people couldn't stop going to to gawk at the house. And I guess I get it on one hand, but on the other hand, it's like the least interesting house in all of media yeah. history. Though, like, maybe Home Alone is like picturesque and like sure. you know, you, but the one in by that, but the one but... in Goonies is distinctive. Yes, like I mm-hmm. feel like it's a different kind of architecture than you usually see, right. and almost maybe defines that Northwest kind of feel. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I love this movie. I, the last time I saw it was when we sent it. Mm-hmm. This is one of those unique ones where we send with Mike. Yeah, it was Mike with. with Hmm. Where we were all in the room together, which is ultimately something we decided was not a great way to send movies because we end up over editing each other and we every other sin is like two well, words long. That's the reason why that Planet of the Apes, Tim Burton Planet of the Apes, is a million sins, but like eight minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> because they're all like real snapping. short and everything. And it's it's a it's a weird standout because I think that movie we ended up putting 160 or 170 without multiples. Yeah. And like it was like still just eight <laughs> minutes. <laughs> well, it's unheard of <laughs> yeah, for 160, 170. But uh, yeah, I I like this movie a lot too, and uh, it's a it's a definite part of my childhood type mm-hmm. of movie and everything. And, uh, all of us probably. Oh yeah. Um, I do remember the reason I ended up seeing this movie though was because I wanted to see Ghoulies, <laughs> <laughs> which came out right around it the came same around time. Around right? the same time. Yeah. And I think I asked my mom, can we see Ghoulies? And then we ended up in Goonies. And I was like, where's the fucking... Aren't they even, supposed to be a little... Even at, at, eight, at eight, I thought to myself, where's the fucking uh, alien creature things? Oh. And, uh, and, then, and, and then, you know, once I like, settled in, I was like, oh, yeah, I like this. This is good. Well, if she had known what Ghoulies was, your mom probably wouldn't have taken you to No, yeah. no. Yeah. And, what, in man. fact, she may have heard me right. And- That's true. Maybe she mommed you, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Right. That's yeah. nice, dear. <laughs> this is uh, Richard Donner... Chris Columbus wrote the screenplay and story by Steven Spielberg. Mm-hmm. Like that's the eighties triumvirate right yeah, there. Yeah, it know? really is. It's uh, too shouty. But uh Can't do it. but yeah, Goonies is good. Uh then we have The Hunted, which is another William Friedkin movie. Um yeah, this a, one a is weird one. Yeah. Uh Benicio del Toro is a guy who's like a fucking awesome like Navy SEAL or Army Ranger or some shit. Tracker or and killer and tommy lee jones is the guy of course because he's the guy who tracks people in every movie and then mm-hmm. i think this was 99 or and 2000 bruce greenwood is the president yeah bruce greenwood is definitely <laughs> is 2003 the 2003 yeah okay he was so he was still in his fugitive samuel gerard yeah type of things because he did u.s marshals mm-hmm. and all that bullshit double jeopardy yeah there are at least four or five movies where he's <laughs> chasing a fugitive of some kind. yeah yep. and they make him do that outhouse hen house you know they do <laughs> and he does that in every one um but uh but yeah he's he's hunting him down i think benicio del toro is like wanted for murder or something yep. I can't, yeah yeah and uh, he's i think he's lost i think he's snapped like they think he's had like a ptsd moment where he thinks he's in combat again mm-hmm and so they're not going to be able to talk him down. Yeah. They have to send in Tommy Lee Jones, the man who taught him everything he knows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though he's like reasonably 25, 30 years older yeah. than Benicio. <laughs> yeah. Benicio looks like he's cut from stone in this movie. He too. does. I saw this maybe four or five years ago. Uh-huh. Um, it's a, it's an engaging enough watch. Listen, I'm going to watch these movies. I just watched The Edge. I know we talked about this in Alaska. See, The Edge is much better. Okay. One really annoying thing about The Edge, which is playing all in stars all the time yeah. now these days, is how many times they say each other's name. Like yeah. Alec Baldwin says, Charles, Charles, Charles. What do you yeah. think, Charles? Yeah. Charles. And then fucking 
Charles Anthony Hopkins says, Bob. He's like, Bob, what do you think, Bob? Yeah. You're going to kill the bad Bob. <laughs> gonna kill the, I'm going to kill the motherfucker. Bob. God, it's, it's very annoying. And there's Pass a the weird twist. Style. Anyway, well, but yeah, I'll, I'll watch these movies. That's your that's your David Mamet right there. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's, that's kind of how he writes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I remember when there was a question that uh, someone asked us that we answered on the podcast. Uh, I went to that particular scene for whatever the answer was, and I was sitting there going, holy shit. He says a lot of the same things over and over and over again in this <laughs> yeah. thing. Um, I'm not going to die today. No. I'm not going to die today. Um, Come on, Bob. But I remember really liking this. Is this 6.0 on the IMDb? I think that might be a little too low. Yeah, but- a little bit. This is a perfect, like, you're not going to hate this movie at all. You're not probably not going to love it. Right. But, like... It's uh, first uh, first blood essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in the same area too. I so. believe Friedkin did Rules of Engagement. Oh, really? It also had Tommy Lee Jones in it. God, that movie was a snooze fest, though. Yeah, it was. That yeah. was basically military arguing for two oh, hours. Oh, that was. Yeah, oh, it, was yeah. it was like the whole thing's a court martial. Yeah, right? yeah, that was awful. <laughs> uh, then, oh man, dude, seriously, this is one of my all time. You you won't believe I've seen this ten times, movie. <laughs> John Tucker must die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I've seen it once. Holy shit. You, this is right up your fucking oh, alley. Yeah, no, yeah, wait. I keep getting confused, honestly, between this and Win a Date with Ted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Who's in this? Uh, this is Jesse Metcalf. What, what really is weird about this is that Jesse Metcalf looks so much like uh, Mark Paul Gossler yeah, from yeah. Saved by the Bell after he dyed his hair and did the Dead Man on Campus thing. And uh, Brittany Snow from Pitch Perfect uh, looks so much like, okay. I forget who she looked like, but she looked like somebody else. Um, that's more Brittany famous. Snow from Prom Night. Thank you very yeah, much. There right. you go. Uh, this has, but yeah. this has uh, just uh, a an unbelievable female cast in it. Oh, yeah. Ashanti. It has Ariel Cabell, uh, who is, who was she best? She was in Fifty Shades Freed. She was the, uh, the girl who like... Uh, uh hits on jamie dornan and uh, she was on uh, uh, uh gilmore girl she was in the grudge yeah 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 uh but ariel cabell is in it sophia bush is in mm-hmm. this uh yeah Brittany snow um but it's it's all it all these girls have dated john tucker mm-hmm. and john tucker tells them all the same things not Brittany snow that's the this plot right. of the movie uh they've all they've all been dating him and in secret they haven't been telling the other friends that they've all been dating him at the same time and he's been keeping it secret and so then they find out i all find out like during a volleyball <laughs> game and they start like you know throwing volleyballs at each other and, shit. and uh so they so they they plan on getting revenge by getting britney snow to start dating him and do the same things that he's done to them, mm-hmm. get him to fall in love with her, and then like at the moment that he does, then drop him. <laughs> uh, so it's just a big revenge fantasy thing. Do they ever actually kill anyone? They don't. Oh, because I thought it was had like a Heather's thing. No. I'd be yeah, kinda... his his death is literally like his social life or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They tried to humiliate him. They're... Didn't they uh, try to make him wear a thong or something like yeah, that? Or they made him wear a thong they, or something He's like... wearing a thong, he has to, and he lock, they lock him out of the motel room or the hotel room. <laughs> See, you wouldn't have to pressure me to do that. Yeah. <laughs> to do that shit willingly. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, but it's just it's just one of those it's one of those movies that it's it's not like it's not like great or anything yeah no it's just very i thought it but was pleasant anytime it's, it's on i find myself compelled to watch it a lot of hot girls that's one thing but I, I, there's a lot of movies with hot girls right sure so there's something going on with this movie that i like yeah right? yeah uh and uh so yeah it's it's uh it's a wreck of worn type of movie oh, sure, john yeah. tucker must die uh then we have kindergarten cop wow. man i loved this movie yeah, I did too. I loved this fucking this movie. This was, I think, Schwarzenegger's second comedy. He had done Twins. Twins, yeah. Ivan Reitman did this as well. This is so much better than Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. <laughs> I didn't know there was a connection. There's got to be a connection because they, they came out around the same time. Stallone went comedy with that. And then Kindergarten Cop, uh, Schwarzenegger did his thing. Yeah. This was so much better because I tell you what, man, he's got actual like comedic timing in this, mm-hmm. this movie. The, the famous like shut up thing where mm-hmm. like, uh, the kids are all going crazy. Have you seen this movie? Yeah. Have the, the kids are going crazy. They're like finger painting all over the walls and shit like that. And it's the one where he, like all of a sudden he's like, 
he goes, shut up. And he's like, shut up, shut up, shut up. And then like he, he, he has to escape because they start to cry and he has to escape. So he goes out the, the door and everything and he's running to the door. And all of a sudden he like, he turns back and he's like, and then he runs out. <laughs> yeah. and he, goes, he goes to get his ferret. But like that like shows a little bit more. I don't know if the director's well, just like, hey, we need you to look back there and pause for a That's sort of the thing that made him a star, right? Because in the Terminator, you, you could be forgiven to think Arnold Schwarzenegger was only going to be stuff like the Terminator sure, yeah. where he didn't have any emotion whatsoever and everything. But he got, he, he, he really had a sense of humor about himself. He never took himself seriously. So. Uh, movies like the running man and predator and all these that came out later basically showcased that. And he showed that he had some sort of comedic chops, even in movies that weren't comedies. Yep. Mm-hmm. And yes, that put him in some really ridiculous comedies, twins and, mm-hmm. and kindergarten cop is another one. Junior, junior for <laughs> sure. Was and, that a comedy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, and jingle all the way and all that. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, kindergarten cop, uh, uh, forever put into the vernacular it's not a tumor that's right that's the uh not a tumor which is actually uh, my favorite quote from that was a different line i think the same i think the same kid he's talking to oh, with the tumor about. line <laughs> yeah. and i used to wait for awkward pauses in group conversations and then just go boys have a penis and girls have a vagina <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's even a point too where they ask what it's like they ask like what his dad does and he's like my dad is gone all day and he looks at vaginas all day (laughs) 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 something like that that's great uh yeah uh i haven't seen it since i was a kid probably me either but i loved it yeah yeah this is a fun one uh then uh maverick we're talking about the mel gibson Mm jodie foster uh james garner movie so what they did uh, this is I, i did a little bit more reading on it i think they end up going to like a mississippi style gambling boat mm-hmm. but they film it all in oregon they had to like uh, because there there are a bunch of hippie tree huggers up there like they had to like the steam that's coming off of the the stacks of the the boat they had to get that cleared by the washington and oregon uh councils and stuff like that but they painted that all up so all the, the stuff that you see is actually in oregon hmm. and uh Man, I like this movie a lot. Mm. Mm. This was, uh, who wrote this? Uh, William Goldman wrote the screenplay oh, for yeah. this. Um, Prince's Bride, William Goldman. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Uh, who just died recently. Yep. And man, I, obviously I have my real issues with Mel Gibson. Um, but everybody's just humming. Well, what in could this that movie. be? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jodie just... Foster's adorable. James Gardner I'm is I'm rethinking great. the Mel Gibson thing a little. How so? I think for a time, my opinion was more of the ultimately i think it comes down to zach galvanakis because he didn't want him in that sequel to hangover but he'd just done a movie with a rapist and i think that really bothered me but i let that double standard of his cause me to maybe forgive gibson a little more than i should mm-hmm. have right, right, the only one. right 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 because the saturday night live which i don't watch anymore but they brought up a nice point with the whole kevin hart stuff about how you get you nominated mel gibson for an award mm. and he said way worse shit and he did yes oh yeah and it wasn't much longer ago than the kevin hart stuff nope now i think the kevin hart tweets were terrible mm-hmm. Un- unlike james gunn he don't think he can claim he was joking on all of them he said them I've got very little pity for this man, especially the way he decided to handle it once it all came to light. Right. Yeah, with no just kidding. a big middle finger, finger to everybody. So I, I've got no pity for him. Um, but I may be rethinking where I stand on the whole Mel thing. Well, this I watched, like I said, a documentary on like a deep dive into his behavior way back um, and, and on reels or whatever it was. And it showed very specifically how long he's been a scumbag. And then when it builds up and it gets to that whole Oksana, whatever his, his wife's name was, and the shit that he said to her but on see, that voicemail, man. I agree. I agree. And this is where my problem, we're getting way off track, and I mm. love it. Um, Alec Baldwin hasn't screamed any racial things. No, no. But there are recordings of him screaming at his daughter that are every bit as disgusting mm-hmm. as that are close to as disgusting yeah, yeah, yeah. as Mel Gibson screaming. But we give that guy a free pass. I mean, I, I I would say comparing those two, which are very similar, yes, they're both egregious. The stuff that the stuff that Mel Gibson said is not only egregious towards the person to whom he was saying, but the stuff that he 
he envelops that yeah. you know the, the the these terrible epithets and stuff like that is just coming from a place of just blackness and grossness to where i always separate the art from the artist but when it comes to him it's getting a little hard well to, i think to it's really getting a little that. hard everywhere isn't yeah. it like i apparently ck or Louis C.K. is just going to get to come back and do comedy again. I think there's enough of a pushback on him, though, to where things aren't going as easy as he thought they well, were going to Well, no, go. he's not going to be able to fill arenas again, probably. No, not but he, that time. man took his dick out and wagged it in people's faces without permission and without warning. Mm-hmm. I, think we're, I think we're in this... I think, I think we're throwing around people deserve a chance to grow and change a little too loosely with some of these people... And how long of a pattern of behavior there is. Right. And some of these people on how egregious that behavior is. Because yesterday I saw a Twitter ta- tag war trying to determine who's the king of R&B. And Chris Brown was up there. Mm. And I'm like, okay, I'm struggling with how I feel about Mel Gibson. And should he be allowed to make movies again? But uh, here's a man uh, just, I feel, just, just fucking murky. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, Everything's it's murky. to get... I mean, it's like, were, were we happier back in the days when we didn't know this shit uh, and it was still going on? But it's not like in 2011 when Kevin Hart is tweeting about not wanting his kid to be gay and using gay epithets, basically. Mm-hmm. It's not like that was commonly acceptable then. No, we no. were We weren't pouncing on people on Twitter the way we are. We weren't trying to use social media to get people fired the way we are. It wasn't the Me Too era, mm-hmm. but it wasn't acceptable. I'm not worried about any tweets from my early days that haven't the, the F word in it. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I didn't ever do that yeah, shit. Exactly. <laughs> I learned that shit was inappropriate in middle school. Yep. And that was the 80s. Uh, so, you know, I, I just think maybe we're defending too many people. It, there's there's a, i mean yeah there's also the the era specific uh type of things going on here where like things that were acceptable to say they were there was a big debate on twitter about some song recently did you see anything about this? maybe it's cold outside well that was one too mm. but uh there was another one that uses a homophobic slur in it money for nothing yeah well, it, could, it wasn't money for nothing but that's one that does yeah. mm-hmm. um but uh it was some song that there was a debate about and this one guy was like you know this is the word that a lot of gay people have heard when they were being beat down and all that and, and then other people were like listen to the context of the song which is m- my view by the way mm. listen to the context of what, how things are being said does it have real hate behind it or not mm. and if i feel like it doesn't then i kind of lean on the fact that it's okay unless you're just doing it in an excessive way of some sort you know uh but uh but yeah there was a big debate about this and this song came out in like the freaking 80s or something like Hmm. that and i'm like you cannot apply the same standards now in 2018 to that song in the 80s you can't just say oh they should have known better because they didn't no i agree and that's why i'm saying if kevin hart's comments with you, you know the gay slurs had been made in 1985 in a high school yearbook. Yeah. I would be totally against anyone coming after him for it because it was as terrible as it is. It was a lot more common for people to throw those things around back in the eighties, uh, but it wasn't, it was 2010, 2011. Uh, yeah, that's mm-hmm. a little bit, that's a little bit more. Racist. And he's blatantly telling people who on Twitter he's fighting with, he's calling them names that I'm not comfortable even saying out loud. Mm. And he's saying things openly like, if my son comes home and wants to play with my daughter's dollhouse, I'm going to break it Mm -hmm. and tell him, no, stop it. That's gay. Mm -hmm. And he was doing this in 2009 through 2011. It's like the James Gunn stuff. Well, and that's (laughs) the thing. That's all it's making me kind of almost come back into James Gunn's corner a little more because at least he was clearly trying to joke. It was disgusting. It wasn't provocative like he wanted it to be. But at least I never thought he was actually raping people. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that is that. That's a yeah. that's definitely a that is a still in the red zone era there, right? I mean, you knew not to say those right. type of things yeah, right. back then. But you know, to you know, you have to go back and do that to every bit of art now. You have to go back to Eddie Murphy's Delirious and Raw and stuff like that because there's shit in there that. Well, you and were, I saw somebody posted about Bernie Mac from Original Kings of Comedy. Um, which I don't, I never yeah. remember the content oh, of, I but know. there's a five minute stretch there where he's talking about some other famous black guy. Y'all should have known he was gay. Well, <laughs> he's using the F word. Yep. Oh, yeah. Left and yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and that was 2000? Yeah, it was 2000, mm-hmm. 2001. Um, and so I do think we have to look at the intent and we have to look at, the, the, you know, the, the era. We have mm-hmm. to look at the, you know, the surrounding culture of when these things were made. And I think in Kevin Hart's case, you know, the, the right thing happened. Mm-hmm. Especially the way missed he missed out on a job. Especially the way he fucking responded. That drove me absolutely nuts. I think the response was worse. Yeah. Well, no, nah, I can't say that, but the response didn't help anything for no, sure. No, no. It was basically, I'm going to do whatever I want. Yeah. You all can't tell me what to do. Yeah. I make movies with I'm not going to apologize, then immediately apologize. Well, and you, after yeah. he lost the job. It was basically, you know they said, apologize, and he said, I'm qu- I quit. Yeah. He ultimately didn't. He did apologize. Yeah. But after he had quit the game. But you know what? Here's the other thing that you're trying to get at, right? Like, even though that wasn't an era where that was still not acceptable and all that, no, people are going back in the into every bit of the past now for yep. every single thing that happens. Yep. And either you knew about that and and you were okay with it, or you just didn't. And I. I don't, I, I'm tired of this. Let's look in the past and see what these people have done so wrong in the past and like totally fuck them up. We are in an ambush gotcha society right now. And both, don't kid yourself, both sides are playing this game. Oh, sure. Trying yeah. to gotcha the other side with statements from the past, statements from the present. That poor gal, Alexandra Ocasio. Yeah. Ortiz. That poor gal. Everything she says is being so scrutinized. Mm hmm. Uh, for a slip up. Um, and she's saying the right things. She is. <laughs> um, but yeah, I agree. The, the intent of some of these people, like I saw a tweet that said, I want to know who the person was that heard Kevin Hart was hosting the Oscars and immediately went searching through 2009 tweets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, I get that. That person's got a heart of stone and blackness. That being said, A, don't tweet that shit in 2009 and 10. B, delete it before you announce yourself as the host of the Oscars. Yep. C, hire a PR firm, you goddamn idiot. And D, immediately apologize and say, this. I've grown from this. I bet he'd still have the gig. If he wanted it, I bet he'd still have the gig. Just say, like, you know what? Yeah, that, that, was, that was messed up. It was in my past. I've grown from it. Just what he said after he quit the gig I'm or saying, got fired. I'm just saying, if you had a problem with Kevin Hart before he got the Oscar gig, bring it up before them mm, if yeah. you have a problem with anybody just go ahead and find it now let's just i'm tired of all this like oh he's got this job oh let's go back and look in 2009 and see what he said yeah and let's reprimand him for that yeah nobody was looking for foul stuff he said when jumanji welcome to the jungle came out mm-hmm. yeah all right it was only when he got this gig, but also after, like, the James Gunn thing really started spinning us in a new era where we're playing social media gotcha. Uh, and again, thankfully. Might be coming back out because that whole, is it Bright House, the, the horror Superman God, they're thing? they're selling his name hard. Oh, the very beginning. I James Gunn production. Here's the deal, though. What, you mean it's Blumhouse? Like, no, uh, the, the, the evil, the horror Superman story. It's Burn oh. Bright. What is it? Uh, Brightburn? Brightburn? Brightburn. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's basically what if Superman were evil and wanted to kill us? Uh, okay. Um, and it's a cool sounding premise, but also the uh, the name of the writer and the director are both Gunn, so I think they're family. Yeah, they, he's got a bunch of brothers. Oh, the screenplays, yeah, Brian Gunn and Mark Gunn. The and director so is I your think F- they probably the marketing team That's probably good. went. There's no <laughs> there's no reason hiding the James Gunn connection. And, you know, Double he, down did, on it. he is apparently getting hired to at least write for DC on Suicide Squad 2. So let's double down. His brother is a well-known character actor. He's in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep. And all oh, that. he's so the, he's, the skinny guy at the end that yeah, plays with the, with plays the arrow. Yeah, that's a different brother altogether. It's right? a different Sean brother. Gunn. Yeah, yeah. Sean Gunn. He's, he's been in uh, a bunch of stuff, but uh, I think he's got like four or five brothers, something mm. like that. But anyway, ultimately, fuck Mel Gibson. Fuck Mel Gibson. Yes. <laughs> Maverick was Richard Donner, though, right? <laughs> what? Maverick? I think it was Richard Donner. Oh, I think it. And there's, I think it was. And there's a there's a part there's a part. The only thing I sure remember, was. Yeah, the sure only thing was. that I remember about Maverick is the scene where Danny Glover shows up because mm. he's a robber or something like that. Oh, and yeah, there's yeah. a point where Danny Glover and Mel Gibson look at each other, and there's this moment of recognition. <laughs> yeah. And then Glover runs out and says, "I'm getting too old for this shit." Yeah um but yeah it's a nice little little like uh surprise twisty ending to it uh everybody's double crossing everybody mm-hmm. it's got a little too much of that like if we were sitting in this we would definitely be like one too many double crosses yes. i think th- i think there's probably one too many and maybe uh, 10 minutes too much poker but 
I do think this movie is enjoyable. Mm-hmm. You don't care about poker. You don't want. You don't care about the suspense of is Maverick going to win the game, well, especially right. at the end because they go they go through the initial like probably about ten minutes of play before the break, then show the break where Jodie Foster and Mel Gibson have sex, and then they show the second half yeah. afterwards. Yeah. It's like all right, you know, I get to just get to the part. Is where Coburn they have sex. in this? Oh yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's enjoyable enough. I remember, again, of course, I saw this the same day with uh, I saw Jack Nicholson's Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> and so probably neither movie ended up coming off very well oh to me. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, well, if you saw Wolf first, then that's... I just don't... I don't really remember. But, yeah, marking that could have soured the whole I'm night. marking my territory. <laughs> um, then we have uh, Mr. Brooks. Oh. Yeah. I did, did not know this was Oregon. I did yeah. not either. Uh Kevin Costner and Dane Cook. <laughs> and, Dane uh, Cook. Uh this was I remember when it came out, Kevin Costner said if this is if this uh turns out to be a hit, we'll make a series of them. And uh no, it wasn't a big hit, unfortunately. Uh movie's very good and it's one of those uh movies in the past ten years that probably should have had a bigger audience. Yeah, and I even tweeted a few months ago that they should do a sequel today with Daniel Pennebecker as a grown-up, his mm-hmm. daughter, mm-hmm. and she's a killer. Just as the movie ultimately hints at. Um, yeah. uh, I love this movie. I do too. I, Demi Moore, I could take her leave. That's yeah. that's true <laughs> of most yeah, movies yeah. she's in. Um, but William Hurt and Kevin Costner and their interplay together that's is so great. fantastic. Yeah. And I love the way this movie chose to portray his i guess insanity i guess mm-hmm. he's he's created this other person that talks to him um but you know the times they show us william hurt and the times they don't are basically perfect the mm-hmm. way they've said it i i love this movie i would love to see a sequel with kevin costner i'd love to see his daughter off killing um <laughs> it sounds worse than it really is but, but also they do set that up though i mean they, they s- do and it would be awesome i'll tell you what the first time i saw that movie the movie's old enough i don't I don't have to worry about spoiling. No, it, I don't do think I? so. It came out ten years ago. Yeah. Okay, so that f- first time I saw it, when he has the nightmare of his daughter killing him with an axe, mm-hmm. and I didn't realize it was a nightmare at first. I thought we we're actually t- going here. <laughs> I loved it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I'm actually a little disappointed the movie doesn't go there, right? Because that would have been rad. But clearly, that's where it's going down the road. Uh, was it Mark Hel- Helgenberger? Yeah, mm-hmm. Mark Helgenberger. Everybody's the- really good in this yeah. movie. It's really well shot. It's it's almost. The same type of uh, reaction we had with Game Night, to where you don't expect a movie like that to be shot so well. Yeah. Mr. Brooks is, like, real sleek. It has elements of the noir, but then there's also, like, just kind of, like, it, it looks nicer than the, the typical thriller, you know? Yep. It's yeah. really good. Good stuff. Uh, Yeah, I would say that's a big recommend, Mr. Yeah. Brooks. Uh, Then there's Mr. Holland's Opus. Oh. I really liked this. Oh, yeah, I love um, this movie. I was uh, I was uh, in my first theater when this came out, and I have seen the ending of this movie a good twenty times, probably because I used to go in and watch uh, this on break, and uh, you know that whole thing where all of his students ca- uh, band together at the end and and play his his music at mm-hmm. the end is uh, it's really affecting. And uh, did you ever cry? I think I have. I cried the first time I saw, I saw this movie, for I, it sure. It came on recently, in fact. Oh, really? I watched it, and I was like, God, it's this... I mean, the, the journey this guy has taken, because it's in... In essence, Mr. Holland's Opus is a movie about how schools defund uh, defund music programs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so, like, he's, of course, ambitious, and he wants to teach the kids everything. He wants to teach them rock and roll. He wants to teach them jazz. <laughs> he wants to teach them all this stuff. But, like, uh, but like uh, just through the years, all the people he's helping and, and all that, like the, the girl who wants to quit school and become a big, like, I, I think it's an opera singer. or fl- I can't remember what it is that she does um but like uh how many people he helps throughout all the years i think terrence howard is in this he is yeah and like terrence howard plays us i think either a student or i can't remember what he plays in this but when he leaves the room he says next time baby yeah that's right that's right (laughs) um what this movie touched for me was uh this is everyone right this is 99.9 percent of people with creative ambition is that they ultimately find themselves in a job that is not their dream because mm. he mr holland wants to be a composer he wants to be a big time composer guy and he's i think only starts out teaching to pay the bills yeah, yeah. and ends up kind of liking it but kind of stuck in it 
And then ultimately, I think even at times regretting it because he has this opus he's been writing mm-hmm. and then he get this this is your life moment at the end where all these people from his life show up that he has touched and they play this thing that he's written and it it gets me because i think we all have dreams we gave up to live a normal life whether it was because we took a job to pay the bills or because we had kids mm-hmm. uh and we couldn't tour with the band anymore or what have you right i mean mm, yeah I, i've always been jealous of my friend josh i talk about a lot because we both left college wanting to be writers and actors and he's been doing it and i was too afraid i took a job i needed to i i didn't have the bravery i needed as a creative artist to just you know work through those starving artist years uh, the way he did. I've always been jealous. There was this other guy that went to college with us, and his name was Joel, and he was one of those touched by God gifted musical individuals mm. where he could sing all varieties with a golden voice, and he could play five different instruments, and he was handsome, and he had a pretty girlfriend. And I remember asking, like, 10 years after college, what's he up to? And somebody said, he's teaching music at an elementary school. Mm. And it initially made me sad as fuck fuck mm-hmm. yeah. because i was like that's john williams and he's <laughs> in one little school but ultimately as the movie suggests he may touch as many sure lives or touch them in better ways i'm pretty sure i've touched your kids yeah. <laughs> and they've touched me too, <laughs> they touched me too. Uh, but this is i love this movie yeah. i think it's a little it's only fault is it's a little syrupy at a couple yep. of times uh but it's fantastic great actor great showpiece for him late in his career he's a yeah. little understated he's his character is unimpeachable he's he's the greatest person yeah. to ever live no right? no he's got one flaw he's got a daughter that he's mean well, to. He's, or... he's got a daughter and a son a son is hearing impaired yeah and oh, so that's a big yeah, deal too that's right um because he grow he first off he's he doesn't want to deal with it like he's he wants uh glenn headley plays his plays his wife wants him wants her to do everything as far as communicating to cole and all sort of stuff and uh and then there's the big moment where uh john lennon is shot right and uh and he's like he's like you couldn't possibly know what this means in the world of music to to his son and and his son signs to him saying how do you know you know i i i I know this this impacts me as much as it does you i know exactly the impact of john lennon blah 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 blah. and it's this big revelatory moment Mm -hmm. you're right it is a little bit too syrupy at times but uh this movie's really fucking it really is i want to watch it again i don't it's a little bit long i don't think think it was a big hit when it came out either like it may have done some mild business like it may have done like a 30 40 million or something like that um did 106 million did it well wow. worldwide at least and oh, what did okay. it do domestic because back then that's all i ever really paid attention to was domestic uh domestic gross was 82 million. okay so it did more than i thought it did um but uh really really good movie yep. uh then we have one flew over the cuckoo's nest yeah it's oregon Ooh. you're uh you're uh, uh bringing up your game oregon <laughs> no kidding started man. off over two <laughs> over the antitrust and then we threw in and man. then we had to throw in some freddie got fingered and all that but you got got some good ones in here yep. uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest do you all right so milos foreman has had a obviously an amazing career mm-hmm. right the ones off the top of my head that I can think of are Amadeus, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and Man on the Moon. I'm sure there's a million others, right? But mm-hmm. those are those are like three of his most notable ones. People versus Larry Flint. Yeah, that's a weird one too. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to like cognitively figure out if I like Amadeus or One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest better because obviously they're completely different movies. Yep. But they are both some of my all-time favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one. This one was like groundbreaking. I don't even know how this happened. Like Michael Douglas was a producer. He had to be like fucking 27 or something like he this. He was at this point. 31 when Was he really? Yeah. Still fucking young to yeah. be. His dad was Hollywood royalty. Yeah. Yeah. And probably still kicking at 102 yeah, or something no like kidding. that. And I'm, I'm not sure. Michael Douglas, uh, he had, uh, what was the, he, he was uh, the streets of San Francisco. Was that what he was on at the yep. time? Yeah. Yeah. That was his main thing back then was the, was that show. And that's all. And then, and then I guess he became. I don't know if that was his first producing credit or what, but the uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, um, but I know that was what he was mainly known for as an actor was the streets of San Francisco. It was his second. Yeah, it was his first production credit. Uh, he was an assistant producer on Cast a Giant Shadow, but he was uncredited. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this was his first production thing. And yes, he came from amazing stock Hollywood stock, but still. 
like just the the talent and the Keezy and fucking uh, Nicholson and Michael Douglas and DeVito and like all these these character actors and uh, Nurse Ratchet. Yeah. Her name, oh, Elise. Uh, oh, um, Louise Fletcher. Yeah, Louise, Louise Fletcher. Fletcher. God, I mean, this this movie hums like all the way through mm-hmm. for me because it, it Mac is such a malcontent and just such a like, you know, he's a, he's. He's a bad guy. Mm-hmm. He's a bad guy. Mm-hmm. He's gaming the system. He's a convict. He's done some shady shit. Uh, he's essentially making this this boy go sleep with the with the experienced woman. Um, he's trying to just fuck with people, but you can't help but love him. Mm. Yeah, it's a good movie. We've talked about it a million times, but uh, yeah, uh, really fantastic. Oh, it's so good. Uh, then we have Overboard. Yeah, this is the original, the OG. This is uh, this is a Kurt Russell Goldie Hawn. This movie is fucked up to watch these days. Yeah, it yeah. probably always was fucked up to watch. That's why I couldn't get why they did that remake with Anna Ferris. Well, apparently, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't watch it, but apparently they they handled it probably much better than they did. Yeah, this one. But, where they, well, they also there's also the whole idea of uh, gender switching the roles, mm-hmm. basically, that make it okay to do it to guys you know yeah yeah so, so this we'll, is we'll mighty looking, uncomfortable we'll be looking at the remake 10 years from now going <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> um but no uh i've never seen overboard oh yeah i had a big old crush on goldie hahn growing up mm-hmm. she is and it's same same thing oddly enough with kate hudson wow. um but uh yeah she's adorable in this even though so the context is that she is a rich privileged woman and uh kurt russell is a carpenter that comes on uh on board to her yacht and uh she's very rude to him and uh he gets real pissed at her and tells her off and all that stuff and then one night she falls overboard roll credits and then like she gets a concussion amnesia he finds her and convinces her that she's his wife and the mother to his like three kids or something Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. and it gets uncomfortable real quick because it's like you know the guy is just basically like oh well you always make dinner for everybody and you always clean up and you always have sex with me and, mm. and then it's like whoa huh? yeah, yeah 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 um yeah. yeah talking about an era specific thing that was you know they you look yeah. at everything in the 80s just about <laughs> like there's stuff that you just can't get away with these days i mean you know that right there wasn't probably considered that nobody batted an eye at that maybe a few people did no yeah. i mean i watched it growing up i was watching when i was a kid it's like uh it's like 16 candles where you know the the guy's girlfriend is drunk and he tells uh andy michael hall go have sex with her she doesn't even know <laughs> Like you know, yeah. it's you know, it's it's it that stuff just flew back then for whatever. But yes, when you look at it in thirty years later, it's uh taint right, taint right. Mm. Uh, then we have the Kevin Costner Postman, which is one mm. of the biggest slogs I have ever walked, it's ever rough. listened to, uh, it's watched. Rough. You know, this has got a good idea to it, though, right? Uh, no, you know I mean, no. If you want a post-apocalyptic symbol of hope, uh, maybe it's a good idea. Maybe the, the problem is they just chose the cheesy choice every step along the yes, way. They did. The, the the idea that a mailman bringing letters from nearby towns could also bring hope makes a fair amount of sense to me, but they just poured the sugar all over every fucking scene in that movie. Yeah. The trailer for this movie is one of the most accidental comedies of all time. I don't remember the trailer. The for it. trailer has a whole part where Kevin Costner has the big speech and everything. He's talking about like, you know, back in the day when when people would get a letter, it was like, you know, and he, you know, just bringing up this idea of getting a letter, like this big <laughs> swelling speech about letters. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so like while he's saying that, there's a there's the big part where he's riding on the horse and he goes by the kid and gives him the gives him the mail and the kid turns around and like whoa (laughs) i just got me yeah and uh so yeah this movie is terrible three hours long Mm. i i couldn't i mean i think kevin kevin reynolds was a part of this one too i think so was or was costner or the i think costner was the director director. Yeah. yeah costner was the director of this movie and uh and it's uh 
It's got an angry Will Patton in it. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) You want a war? I'll give you a war. It's got a still had a career Lorenz Tate in it. Yeah. It had Olivia Williams in it. Yeah. And uh, and it has um, Tom Petty. Has Tom Petty in it? It does have. Oh God, God help us! It's like it's like it's like a watered down Mad Max with the postal office, post office, or whatever. Like. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's, uh, whoa. Oh yeah. God. No. Just no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, further slogging, the ring two. Ooh, I only ever saw the first one, which I quite liked. Yeah. Um, the first one's good. The second one is just fucking awful. You, really? Oh, yes. Now, I'm not saying I, I liked it. I thought, the, I think remembering this is the one where she goes into the TV after Samara, right? Uh, yeah. She ends up going into because, Samara possesses. I remember this because we did a we did we did the was sends it, on was, this. Was right? it us? I know I was on it. I was on it in some way, uh, but but I, I rewatched it fairly recently, and yeah, it's not good. It's very formulaic and stuff like that. But she possesses her kid, like the Samara yes, possesses the kid. Yes, and she's got to figure happens. out how to get samara out of there and then she's got to meet her on her own turf and everything it's totally formulaic yeah i just I didn't think I, it was I, for some reason i don't remember her going into the tv or it was anything like it was that. at the very end i don't remember that but uh but like yes the kid is is infected the entire time right. and he he becomes a murderer essentially honestly that kid was infected like when he was born yes. i'm talking about the actor he's not got the, the creepy character. creepy eyes like that is damien that is the <laughs> devil spawn i love you kid you're probably the sweetest kid in the world but you were born with the look of a devil child yeah, <laughs> yeah it's very true uh, there's a whole long scene where they they go to some like fair it's almost like in the simpsons where like homer's driving along and he's like oh a fair and pulls the- <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> um but uh they're at some fair and then and naomi watts is like uh, going around i don't even remember what she's doing but like her kid just walks off mm-hmm. and he she didn't even notice for like 20 minutes and he goes <laughs> in the bathroom and he gets infected by samara in the bathroom yep. and everything uh but yeah that movie's awful i didn't hate i hated it i got infected by samar in the bathroom once yeah, i know right mm-hmm. yeah i think a few people have i just told yeah. everybody my ex-girlfriend gave it to me mm-hmm. that's correct <laughs> you don't want to get a bad case of samar that's true that's right the ring two is uh 5.4 on the imdb i think that's perfect that's, that's a perfect that's rating probably right that's the perfect amount of pepper pepper boy uh this probably <laughs> <laughs> oh Emily Van Camp is in this. She's oh, the first. Uh, she's, uh, she's one of the first victims in the movie. She's Captain America's girlfriend. She is mm-hmm. modern uh, girlfriend. Yes. Yes. Granddaughter of Peggy, the not uh, girlfriend Susie. But know. yeah, she's she's cute. No, Peggy was the one that was in the forties. You know, and uh, also oh, really? hmm. also Devay Chase, who was in Donnie Darko and played the little sister, is Samara. You know, Donnie Darko's oh, been yeah. playing again recently. Oh yeah. First of all. Why did we ever act like that movie doesn't make sense? Oh, I don't know. Because I think it's I think it's probably because um, we want to feel smart. Maybe. Because I'm watching this watch through and I was like, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. I know exactly what the movie's telling me happened. It resets the timeline, right? Yeah. But, yeah. We, but we always acted like, what, like, there's so many interpretations of the WADA and the who's it's and the what. <laughs> I always forget angry, skinny Seth Rogen is in that movie. Yep. I always remember Patrick <laughs> Swayze is coming. <laughs> when was this? 2002? Uh, 2001. But mostly I just wanted to say that 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 slow cover of Mad World is still fantastic. Oh, There's yeah. two amazing music, musical moments in there. It's the Tears for Fears, the Head Over Heels yeah. montage yeah. to open everything. And then the Mad World to essentially close everything. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. A good, it's a good watch. It's coming on the, the movie channels? One know. of the Showtimer stars has been playing it a lot. I'd Ooh, give it a look. I'm gonna, yeah. yeah. It's been a while since I've seen that. I, lo- I like every part of that movie i love the voice on the rabbit the voice on the rabbit always creeped me out yeah because it's always 10 percent lower and gravelier yeah and like more reverberating than you remember yeah oh yeah i like it it's I like, good i like their choice i found i it. found my rewatch to be quite quite enjoyable richard uh, kelly what besides southland tales what did richard kelly do is that richard that? kelly he did the box. Oh, that movie sucked. It sucked. That's what I'm saying. He like he made one great movie and then just went off a cliff or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know if he's made anything after the box. I'm sure he has. Did you ever see Southland Tales? I saw Southland Tales once. Don't uh, oh, don't remember my it. God, that movie. <laughs> I saw the box once, and unfortunately, I still do remember <laughs> some of it. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I hate everyone in that movie. They are I all do. evil people. Yes. Uh, say it isn't so. Oh God, the okay. My sister. Uh, I could have sworn this was a fairly brothers joint, but it ain't. It sure feels like one. Did I they bet produce you, it. I bet you if they had something to do with it, and especially if they directed it, I bet. No, it probably would still not be watchable. They they are producers. Of they this are movie. producers. Yeah. Okay, well it it's got it's got their stank on it a little bit. It sure does. But we talk uh, about movies that I mean I don't think a lot of their movies would fly much moving forward into the future. Well, we were literally we were just watching. There's something about Mary before you guys got here, and we were saying like this is this is a really good movie and it's really like paced well and put together well. The the jokes land. Yeah. But then you do something like Stuck on You. Which is not funny at all. No. Chow um, how. Chow yeah. how, yeah. It's like... Or, or you know, this. So <sighs> this is about... Uh, so Heather Graham and Chris Klein, I think it is, yep. mm-hmm. are dating, and then they find out that they're brother and sister. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Probably, if I had to guess, based on a true story. <laughs> as much <laughs> as this movie so. sucks, that probably has happened before. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't even need to be made into a movie. Yeah, mm. and and of course, uh, they're not brother and sister. That's, yes, so they can continue fucking. Right, 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 right. They gotta have. They, I mean, if you if that has to be the very end of the movie, if that's the whole point. I do remember. Oh, I, I do remember the very end of this movie. Did you ever see it? No. So the very end of this movie, they clear up all the sister fucking. Right, they're like, you know, okay, we're fine. We can mm. g- resume dating. But then it, uh, Chris Klein meets his actual mother, who is uh, Suzanne Summers. Okay. And the joke is that it flashes back to he used to jerk off to Suzanne Summers when he was a kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is a little bit funny. <laughs> yeah. I watched this movie the other day. <laughs> I could bring this up for record warm, but I don't know that we're going to have time anyway. But uh, did you ever see this movie, The, the Curse of the Golden Flower? Oh, yeah. I saw uh, that. Was it uh, Chow Young Fat? Chow Young Fat. Yeah. Um, because it's first of all, everything in that movie is fucked up. He's the emperor. He's poisoning his wife. It's his second wife. Mm-hmm. Um, slowly to kill her. God knows why. She's fucking one of his sons, her stepson. Mm-hmm. That same stepson is fucking the daughter of the medicine woman. <laughs> medicine woman turns out to be the first wife. And the daughter of the medicine woman is also the emperor's daughter. Mm-hmm. So he's been fucking his sister all along. Ah! And he gets all horrified at that. And I'm like, you were fucking your stepmom the whole movie, and you're going to get horrified at that? That's why when you're finding mates, you need to go out of town every once Yeah, time. you need to get out. You got to get out. <laughs> I was this close to spitting on your curb. <laughs> oh, anyway, finding I didn't enjoy mates. that movie, even though it was it does have lots of spectacle. Yeah. So yeah. It's fucked up, and it's not fun to watch. Um, then we have Short Circuit. Got another, like... Uh, yeah, like 80 staple kids you know like johnny the, five man i watched the shit out of this movie. yeah do you, oh. do you think you could watch it now no <laughs> that movie's gotta is this, be like is this fisher stevens, stevens playing an indian yes. dude? that's the sequel that's the no, sequel no, no, he's, he's in the first one too is he really in yeah, the fr- yeah, yeah. but then yeah. the sequel's all about him yeah yeah okay, yeah. That, okay i don't think they could get gutenberg back for the second one. no i think you're absolutely right because <laughs> i don't think it's good <laughs> I don't think it's good at right. all. Yeah. Um, and yet I love the show. I was just the right age, man. Oh, me too. Yeah. yeah. Just the right age. Oh, and yeah. also, you know, we don't get the character design of Wally if we never have short circuits. That's, That's true. true. So. No, uh, I think it's adorable. And, and I, I, I think I put it in the show notes. Like I, I don't think it would be even watchable today because it's so goofy mm-hmm. and so paper thin. Is Ali Sheedy is his girlfriend. I think ooh, so. Ooh. And, but like, I, it's got to be just just so stupid that it, you would lose brain cells. Oh shoot. God, but it's got to be. As a kid, man, I agree with you. It was perfect. Yeah, oh, it's it. just one of the, it's one of those movies we we mentioned a couple. Of Goonies is yeah, Goonies is better than this movie. But, yeah, but uh, but but Short Circuit, man. I I remember people just qu- quoting this all the time. Yeah, my, people in my age group. Yep. Good God, man. This was, disassemble. this was the godfather of kids movie. <laughs> it really was it really was <laughs> uh stand by me love this movie we've talked about it a bunch rob reiner directing a bunch of people who are going to be famous later a whole fucking slew of them yes you yeah, have they will, couldn't even have known you have will wheaton in this mm-hmm. you have Corey feldman jerry o'connell river phoenix will, will wheaton did yeah, you say will I, wheaton? I have the first one 
What was the River Phoenix? What River you, there's Phoenix? one you missed. The Kiefer Sutherland, Kiefer. John Cusack. <laughs> I screwed up. <laughs> was Cusack uh, his right hand? Or was uh, Ace's right hand man? Uh, what was Cusack in this? He was he was the brother. Of the brother. Will Wheaton. Of, oh, that's right. That's right. He, the wrong kid died. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 I never realized how easy it was to accidentally cut <laughs> someone in half. <laughs> Let's just watch Walk Hard like two <laughs> so, days ago. <laughs> so good. Uh, but yeah, he's he his he's Will Wheaton's character is dealing with that. His yeah. brother died uh, unexpectedly and all that. And then there's uh, I think Richard Dreyfus is the uh, narrator of this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. That's right. Um, but um, Stand by Me is based on a Stephen King. Uh, is it novella or was it short story? Uh, it may have been. It was within one of those words. Yeah, uh, it was based on the body. And uh, yeah, I read that one. Whatever one that that's in is like my favorite collection oh, yeah. that he's got. And I should say that this is based. This is technically based in Castle Rock, Maine, uh, but it was filmed all in Oregon. Oh, okay. Uh, so so well, that's that, there's a little that juxtaposition. Is, that is kind of going off uh, what we've been doing. But yeah, well, we didn't talk about it during Maine. Yeah, so yeah, I figured, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that, weird. They both have cities named Portland. Oh, Ooh, so does, Ten- so does nice. Tennessee. That's right. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> but uh, so it's it's uh, these kids uh, sort of uh, friends and everything. And then they they one of their one of their friends says, oh, then I know somewhere where there's a body or is it Kiefer Sutherland is talking about it. They overhear it. I can't they, remember. They figure it out some way. It, you know, it's amazing and watching it. And I still can can throw on it anytime and watch even just one of those interstitial scenes where like it's just the kids running around mm-hmm. at the reservoir or at whatever and that brings me as much joy as like the terrifying stuff mm-hmm. uh it's amazing how stephen king was able to latch onto whatever part of that childhood that he had and write these stories that almost everyone can relate to yeah you know, just getting into shenanigans and just adventures as a kid sometimes they were way over your head sometimes they were just kid appropriate like swimming at a fucking you know quarry or whatever yeah uh, i love it man but I love yeah the way I, he writes I, that. I guess they i guess they over here and they decide that they're gonna walk to this place that's in the woods somewhere and there's all these different things that happen they get caught in the junkyard with the dogs they get uh on a railroad track and a, and a train starts coming and there's you know leeches but you know my favorite part of this though maybe will wheaton telling that story about the eating contest oh yeah <laughs> which is ironically the one part of the movie i have to turn away oh from. it's well yeah once the vomiting occurs yeah. then yeah but uh <laughs> Uh, but I, I do like the idea that they've uh, turned his character into this. He's a would-be writer, a future writer. And yeah. He tells this story that's so engrossing to his friends and everything. Uh, but uh, Stand By Me is really, really good movie. Uh, we've recommended it before. We'll recommend it again. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thumbsucker. Oh, I've seen this. I can't remember. No, I didn't see this. Um, that's uh, Is it Patrick Fugit? No, it? it's Lou Taylor Pucci, oh, who is a basically, it hey, looks a lot like yeah. Patrick Fugit. Uh, this movie's good. Give me the premise. Uh, it's a kid that grows up with this, this um, well past his age, this thumb-sucking habit. And so he goes through different uh, like therapies and stuff like that, different ways to uh, to, oh. to cure it. Canoe is, is a psychiatrist that tries to help him. I haven't him. seen this. I must have seen another movie called Suck. <laughs> Something. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's something. There's something that I think you're thinking of uh, that has. Yeah, um, sort of suckers. Christina, I don't know why they call them that. That has Christina Ricci in it. That uh, is closely related to pumpkin. This. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Um, but thumbs up, which I think does have Patrick Fugit in no, it. No, that's got the kid from the Ice Storm in it. Oh, really? I think so. Oh, Fuck, good. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Thumbsucker is is really good. Uh, Tilda Swinton and Vincent D'Onofrio play his, his parents, and they've got this weird standoffish relationship with them. Um, he's trying to kind of reconcile with them while still trying to come of age, basically. Uh, gets into drugs for a little bit, and uh, it's it's a good good movie. All right, I'm Excellent. trying to I'm trying to think of this. Uh, oh no, I have seen this because Keanu Reeves tells him to uh, get into a spirit animal in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I don't remember much about it other than the canoe stuff. Yeah um but then we have another 80s classic war games god oregon must have been like um given all them tax breaks back must in the have 80s. because there's a lot of 80s movies yeah. coming out of there uh war games did you say war games uh, i watched the shit out of this movie yeah. is this a good movie no 
I mean, th- this is another one. I didn't watch it a whole lot growing up. This was not in that short circuit kind of, I don't know, purview for me. I, I, I really like this movie, mm-hmm. though. Um, it it may suffer a little bit from technology Maybe. Uh, uh, well advancing past this. Back in the 80s, that kind of, these kind of hacks and everything were like ridiculous mm-hmm. you know like that was i guess that was cutting edge in 1983 it probably was 1983 sure. um but uh it's it's one of those movies it's real fun and i think it's got a it's, it's got a good ending to it i think it i think it takes way too long for like for anything to have happened that would have stopped the nuclear war by the end of it uh because it because the computer goes through that whole loop through that whole thing by the end and you're yeah. like oh the fucking missiles are already fired by now. <laughs> uh but uh in ali sheedy's in this too oh, oh, nice. uh, but uh yeah and dabney coleman who was also in another 80s uh, uh computer movie called cloak and dagger uh where the oh the, i remember which that had uh, henry thomas with the uh the 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 game cartridge that had the government oh, secrets on it yeah. and everything and there was the uh the two-fingered lady and all that you know it was uh, dabney coleman was always in these it was, <laughs> dabney coleman's always in these movies no oh, dabney uh what the bleep do we know i remember this coming out uh I, it's a documentary right kind of kind of it's it's got a it's it's a weird movie. Do you remember seeing it? No, I never saw it. This was two thousand four. It, it's it's trying to cover a lot of ground. Where like it starts with quantum physics, and then it goes into how that impacts humanity, and how that impacts neuroscience and stuff like that. And and it's it's well put together. It's well put together <sighs> enough to. <laughs> 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 it's put together well enough to where you will trick yourself into believing a that you're super smart for watching this Ooh. and that b they know what they're talking about Ooh. and they, they've got some filmed like actual like narrative bits where marley matinlin actually oh, is, yeah? is the uh the actress that that plays this this part and it turns out there's a lot of pseudoscience in this the the experts that they quoted were quoted out of context or at least they said they yeah. were but the the narrative that it puts forward that everything is connected and and the the science behind it is actually very entertaining and you feel like there's something there for sure mm-hmm. it's been a while since i've seen it i was in grad my first year of grad school every i had this this uh the seminar on emotions that that was the seminar emotions like this is supposedly like a the high level thing song? yes you got me feeling <laughs> in fact we all sang that together in the first one <laughs> Uh, so it, what, what it was, you sit around and you talk about like the etiology of emotion. Where does it come from? Uh, from, from, you know, the, the neuro, neurological basis of emotions. How do we express it? What, what prompts it? That kind of thing. And so we started talking about what the bleep do we know and how that would impacted everything. And so all of us had to go see it. And at that point, you're like, Hey, man, there's something to this, but hmm. apparently not much. And it hasn't certainly had a big life after that that period it was like the secret basically. yeah i think it had that, like that two-week shelf life there where yeah. people were talking about it a little bit i never saw it though yeah. uh then we have wild the reese witherspoon movie where she goes off and uh, does that big huge what is it what trail is this pacific, pacific something trail. coast yeah, PCT, yeah, the Pacific Coast Trail, pacific right? Coast. Yeah, I think it is Pacific Coast Trail. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah um this is a really good movie. Yeah. She's fantastic in this movie. Yeah, yeah. This is sort of uh, like Reese came out of nowhere and and like she had this great career and then kind of dipped down there for a while where like nothing she was coming out with was any good. And then this came out and was like, oh, yeah, I remember. I like Reese Witherspoon. Mm-hmm. She's really good. Um, I uh, No, I, I, I love all this type of stuff. I love Into the Wild, too, mm-hmm. um, uh, even though Into the Wild's a lot more dour, obviously. But, yeah. But uh, this this movie, uh, I like the idea of someone sort of like uh, exercising their demons and going out and, you know, yeah, they're thinking about all the things in the past and everything. But this this uh, this uh, accomplishing this goal sort of helps them cope with all those things and everything, because, hmm. uh, you know, because what is she's she's sort of like uh, uh, 
she's been with in a lot of relationships with men like they're like very casual and everything and just like a lot of stuff that she regrets waking up doing a lot of drugs all this other stuff and laura dern plays her mom yeah and her mom dies and that's why she starts acting out yeah. and doing all that shit and then she she decides you know what i'm gonna i think after she gets a divorce i think she was she was married this whole time mm-hmm. um and it's the pacific crest trail but mm. good to know i had three of the five letters going. <laughs> yes <laughs> um it's funny that the title wild seems like it's so innocuous but it does really apply to a lot of different yeah. parts of this movie because that was her background and then she's essentially into the wild here um it's really well done she can handle like distraughtitude and she can handle like being out and being stoned or being you know whatever uh she's got a lot of range in this movie. yeah and there's a i mean there's a, a there are a couple of points in there like yeah there are of course dangerous people out there and everything i think they do there's two guys who want to uh rape and kill her at mm. some point in in there but then there's like a really tense moment where she has to she has to get in this guy's truck mm-hmm. or else she's going to die but it's so tense because you're like oh my god this dude there's no i mean there's this this is just going to be terrible mm-hmm. and everything and uh but uh a lot of, t- a lot of times it t- comes back to surprise you and everything it's yep. a good movie this is a really good movie uh then a not very good movie called without a paddle oh. <laughs> seth green dax shepherd matthew lillard matthew lillard there's only like one really funny moment in it, and that's when they all have to huddle together to keep warm yeah. and the r kelly song starts playing <laughs> my mind is telling me no <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah it's uh it's a bunch of buddies going out camping or something they're looking for db cooper's uh fortune this movie got a fucking sequel did it yes without a paddle too further down the spiral less paddling yeah less paddling (laughs) yeah even more without a paddle (laughs) um but uh yeah that movie is, is is awful i did see it um but uh yeah not very funny no then uh one of my favorites zero effect i've talked about zero effect a bunch uh bill pullman in one of his best roles ever he's playing a whole sherlock holmes type of uh investigator for the modern day his watson is ben stiller um uh, but he's playing daryl zero in this and uh it's a it's about a a case of where ryan o'neill asks him to find his car keys that he's lost but that uh, looking for his car keys turns into a much bigger uh, mystery where he is being blackmailed. Well, actually, that's part of it. He's being blackmailed, but he wants to find his he wants to find his keys, and that's the only thing he wants to find yeah. is the keys. Because what's what that what those keys open are in a PO box that have all sorts of secrets about him in it and everything. Even though I don't think he knows where that PO box is, mm. he just wants to make it where nobody can get there. But um, it opens up a big mystery. He's being blackmailed. Why is he being blackmailed? Um, and he and uh, and uh, Zero ends up running into this this girl played by Kim Dickens, mm-hmm. uh, who he finds out is the girl who is doing all the blackmailing. And so you got to figure out why is she the one doing the blackmailing? It's got a really good, satisfying mystery to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I think everybody across the board is great in this. Is Jake Kasdan? If he were to hang it up tomorrow, would he be considered a, a very good director? N- no. Just looking at He's it. He's got good movies. Zero Effect, Orange County, which I kind of liked, but it wasn't, you know, a, a huge hit. He did Walk Hard. He did Bad Teacher. Then he did Sex Tape. But then he did Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah, so, no. I don't. Yeah, I don't think he will be. I would call um, him good. And, and, and certainly not the legend of his father. Mm. but um but i mean but between zero effect walk hard and jumanji welcome to the he's jungle he's got a decent track record a pretty we good can't tracker. say he sucks yeah uh, guilty as joe <laughs> don't you dare write a song right now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but zero effect is 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 one that you know he he obviously was going to be on that track of being like uh you know a jason reitman or somebody like that where it was 
you know, he was going to come out with some prestige movies, but zero effect, I think, uh, since it tanked so heavily, I don't even know if it, it may have made a million dollars. Maybe mm. may, have, I don't know how much it made, but it wasn't a big, uh, it made 2 million, 2 million. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. It, uh, I, I think it was, I think it was me and the other guy that was in the theater that contributed <laughs> that to that total. Uh, but, uh, I highly recommend zero effect. Uh, I think it has a way too low IMDb rating. In fact, uh, what is it? Uh, it's, uh, oh, it's 7.0. So it's good. Nice. All right. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, go check that out if you can. <laughs> Ones that Barrett haven't, hasn't seen. <laughs> <laughs> Are we there yet? Oh, what a shitty movie. Oh, Was this in your 2005 run? Yes. <laughs> Either either this one or the sequel was. I saw the sequel. Too. Oh my god! These are both Ice Cube, right? Yeah, Ice Cube, and uh, yeah, it's a road movie. And I think they made a series, a TV series out of this. Are we? It was. I think it was uh, the second one. Was are we home yet? Are, are we, we done, done yet? yet? Are we done yet? One. Are we done yet? Was the one where they're building the house, and I think John C. McGinley's in it. Oh really? Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> um. And yeah, that both of those are awful. Uh. <laughs> then there is Bad Samaritan. Uh, that came out earlier this year. This was the David Tennant thing where he like ends up going to a house that that isn't his just to escape some oh, crooks. Oh yeah, that's so, right. Watch the trailer that's for right. it. That's right. Um, it actually looks interesting. I don't know if it got any good reviews or whatever. Um, I don't have a whole lot of David Tennant. Now, David Tennant was the villain in Jessica Jones season one, mm-hmm. right? He's Doctor Who of yeah, of, and uh, just starting to watch a yeah. little Doctor Who. He seems like a like a like a good cat, like a like a good actor, cool guy. Yeah, you know. he's also in that camping uh, thing. That's, oh, that's right. Yeah, I don't uh, like anything about that movie. Yeah, that yeah. And then there's uh, I know Jeremy seen this Bandits. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Yeah. Is it good? Uh, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is we're talking about the Bruce Willis, right? Mm-hmm. Kate Blanchett and uh, Billy Bob. Billy Bob. Um bank robbers on the run they basically their their shtick is they go to the bank manager's house the night before knock on the door make their way in with guns usually they get a meal cooked for them coffee <laughs> hang out and then they go to the bank in the morning with the bank manager before they open get in to unlock the bank and the safe early take the cash and take off they get to the point where they're so famous like a talk show is interviewing them like and it keeps cutting to that hmm. throughout the movie um as they head towards one fateful last heist Mm. um i really really enjoy it i just don't think i can put my it would be a record warm because i don't know that everybody would um but both of those guys are fun in this movie this is not a bruce willis phoning it in performance Mm. uh kate blanchett is playing a crazy daffy ditzy unlike a lot of the roles she's played where she's commanding and in charge and knowing her shit um so yeah I, i really really like it i just uh you know i can't fully endorse how old is Kate Blanchett? Because I, I would put her anywhere between. She is forty nine. Yeah, I was gonna say okay. forty seven. Yeah, I would have put her anywhere between I, like thirty nine and fifty. Believe her. Believe she was born in nineteen sixty nine. Interesting. Um. Yeah. Just. Just. I think I saw this recently because she was in something. But, uh, but yeah, I think that's right around what she's, uh, she's looked almost the exact same for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, and, and burst Bridget, on the scene with Elizabeth. There. Right. Like, and came out of nowhere. It seemed like here, at least in the States, mm-hmm. uh, and she probably had a pretty decent career before that, but she was young though. I mean, that was yeah. when Elizabeth came out, she was 29, I think. Mm. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like me some Kate Blanchett. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's case 39. Uh, this is about some sort of, uh, child abuse thing or like, uh, they go to, go to the house and I haven't seen the movie. Yes, I think so. But they go to, they go to the house and they find out that it's, uh, more fucked up than. Yeah. And I don't. Demons. Yeah. Yeah. It's demons. Uh, have you ever heard of this movie? Nope. Uh, Renee Zellweger, Bradley Cooper, Ian McShane. Wow. Like, uh, 2009. It's not like it was forever ago. I never heard of it. I I don't know if I want to watch it. No, but I don't know if this is before. But if I was flipping channels, just like the next three days, if I came across <laughs> that, I'm like, Renee Zellweger, I know her. This looks fairly recent. I've never heard of this. What is this? I'd probably mm. watch the whole thing just yeah. trying to figure out what it was. I don't want to like cast aspersions because I know that was a that was a thing. Uh, at what point did Renee Zellweger stop looking like her old self? It was recently. Yeah, it was like two, three years ago. There was that one picture. Yeah. That was it. Was it just the one picture? So maybe it was just a bad picture. No, I think uh, I've seen her since then. 
well, and she looks different. Uh, okay, at the risk of libeling or slandering, what I heard was, yeah, she had some work done. didn't come out so great. There was a couple pictures snapped. Everybody freaked out. She had some more work done. Looks a lot more like herself now. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, because right after that, she came out with the Bridget, Bridget Jones, Jones yeah. which looked exact. She looked exactly the same in the trailer. That but was after that? Yes. yes. Oh, that was after I that. Okay. So I don't know what happened there. Okay. Uh, but her IMDb picture looks completely different from what she looked like back in the Empire Records Jerry Maguire day. Yeah. Yeah. It was just such a shocking change that, and who knows how it happened or why it happened. But, yeah. Um, I don't know if she made any movies. Yeah. I'm not casting a spur. There are plenty of like decent reasons to get some work done. Sure. Yeah, man. That are not just vanity. Although a lot of people get work done for vanity. Ah, I got my testicles shrunk. You're right. Wow. <laughs> of all the things for you to pull out right there, your testicles is not what I expected. Cosmetically shrunk. Like, my wife was watching one of those Real Housewives shows the other day, and, you know, not to be crude, but I was like, why do, why do people feel the need to do this? The boobs? The boobs, the lips, the cheeks, the foreheads, the, mm. the, everything that, the at least on this particular Housewives show, every single one of them seemed to have done, where it looks so fakey, I'm like, you would probably be prettier if you just looked like an old you mm -hmm. as opposed to this like robot nonsense <laughs> yeah i don't understand like there are again there are reasons i know a kid in high school had a car accident and got a nose job just because he didn't want to have a crooked nose mm -hmm. his whole life um, owen wilson obviously made other decisions mm -hmm. that's correct <laughs> i'm gonna look like my nose is broken in every film. that's gonna be my thing <laughs> Uh, don't worry, he won't get far on foot. This is a Gus Van Sant movie with Joaquin Phoenix and Jonah Hill. From this year, right? It's from, yeah, I think it's from this year. Um, it's about a guy who, uh, has a drinking problem. His friend, uh, Jack Black is plays his friend in this. Uh, they go out on a night of drinking. Jack Black gets behind the wheel. They're both super drunk. They get in this huge, like, ridiculous car accident. Uh, Jack Black uh, comes out unscathed, but Joaquin Phoenix ends up like in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Uh, his big thing is drawing cartoons, almost far side ish type of thing. There's a lot of discussion about politically p political correctness in this too, because hmm. he does write a lot of he does a lot of uh, jokes about people in wheelchairs, and he's in a wheelchair. Hmm. Hmm. Um, but uh, a lot of it is just him going to like uh, you know coping with his his addictions going to aa meetings jonah hill plays his sponsor and everything it's a perfectly fine movie it's i it's one of those movies that i saw recently and when it came down to recommending a warning it was like there's not any in between even wreck a warn that i can yeah that i can bring up because it's it's a movie it's, <laughs> It's, it looked like total Oscar bait, though. Yeah, like, it kind of kind of is trying the that way that for the that. trailers presented, the way that like you know he everybody's kind of made up, mm -hmm. kind of looked like it was like we're going prestige on this. But yeah, I didn't it, get there. There's right? nothing special about this. Uh, it, it's perfectly fine. It's there's nothing there's nothing at all great or terrible about it. Then there's Elephant Gus Van Sant again. Yeah, uh, we just talked about this. Yeah, just talked about this. I did recommend this. Uh, this was uh, a movie that uh, it's it mirrors Columbine. Mm -hmm. It's not the it's not the exact things that happened uh, during Columbine, but it's the it's uh, sort of um, it's sort of a, yeah, it's just a mirror of it. And the way it's told is told in different perspectives. So you'll be following around. Uh, this couple for a while and they'll they do their normal everyday things at school and everything and then it will switch and go back in time sometimes to another group of people and a lot of times the stuff that you just saw will be seen from a different perspective uh. um so like there's a scene where somebody is walking down a hallway it's one of these long tracking shots or whatever and you'll see them running down the hallway then you'll actually you'll see two people talking and you'll see somebody walking down the hallway then that movie will at some point will switch and you'll see the person walking down the hall. Oh, in interesting. Perspective. Um, it's all building up to this big Columbine style massacre. And obviously that's, you know, there's, that's, um, yeah, that's the uh, awful bit of it, but uh, it's a really interesting, uh, interesting movie. And if you can handle that kind of subject matter, I, I suggest Talking a lot about Gus Van Sant today. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was just looking at his, his thing. Like he's got a lot of really great shit. 
But then, like, he kind of falls off a little because he got Drugstore Cowboy, My Own Private Idaho, which I liked. Um, even Cowgirls Get the Blues. Isn't that Samantha? It's Uma Thurman. No, it's Uma Thurman. It's Samuma? <laughs> and it's uh, Some Uma Thurman. It's Uma another Thurman. Phoenix is in that too. Rain is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, to Die For, excellent. Goodwill Hunting, excellent. Then Psycho, and then Finding Forrester, and like besides Elephant, like he's kind of. And I guess Milk was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like he's kind of just kind of falling off. Maybe he's counting that money. Like he, yeah, like he's <laughs> doing a <Jane laughs> Silent Ben, Bob. Ben, I'm busy. <laughs> uh, um, girl, a movie with Dominique Swain in it. I've never seen this. Jeez, this has all the girls. Does it? From from the girls. It has Summer Phoenix, Tara Reed, Selma Blair. Yikes. Portia de Rossi. Wow. Yeah. It's got a it's got a lot of girls. It's nineteen ninety eight and it looks very nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. Uh then there's a Green Room. Uh, this movie is fucked up. Do you uh, do you recommend this movie? i I think I want to watch this movie. Um Okay, so it's it's a movie being sold as a horror movie. Right. I wouldn't consider it horror. There are horror elements in it. But it's about a band who goes to play at this uh this like out of nowhere bar or whatever, and they find out pretty quickly with the opening band that this is a Nazi friendly bar. Hmm. Uh and they're just in the waiting room uh for a bit and i and something happens where one of their band members and i've i haven't seen this in a while but i think one of their band members comes out and does something that uh, makes the nazis irate patrick mm. stewart is the head nazi in this oh he plays a nazi in yeah, this. yeah oh yeah. wow and uh anton yelchin's in this um i guess and, he's not hosted the oscars no he's not he played a nazi that one time oh you <laughs> sorry that was um, probably just showed up sometimes <laughs> <laughs> it has uh, Imogene Poots in it and it has Al- Alia Shawk out in it. I know there's well. a lot of like um, interesting performers in this. Yeah, but uh, something happens where one of the I think one of the band members does something that uh, raises their ire and they lock themselves up in this waiting room essentially. And in the, the Nazis, green room. Yeah, and these Nazis are like you know like trying to get in and everything and they're they're doing everything in their power. But there there's some some pretty fucked up violence hmm. in this movie. Um, but it's I think it's really well done if you can handle that kind of occasional horrible gore the movie itself is one of those really interesting like it's it takes a place all in one spot and it's uh really tense and got a lot of good performers in it so. yeah now i remember uh really being interested in this thing yeah uh, the, the guy as uh, jeremy saulnier has done other movies called like blue ruin is one of the other ones that people talk about all the time which i still haven't seen uh but um must be doing his own colors trilogy yeah yeah exactly <laughs> like that a- like that christoph Kristowski or whatever his name yeah, was yeah. that did red white and blue the three yeah. colors this uh, was uh a24 yep a24 oh, wow. yeah okay. so that's another reason that i was kind of like eh, could be good uh i've never seen here no evil marley matlin martin sheen oh she's a deaf woman uh i haven't seen and it and there's evil yeah. evil yes i'll put it somewhere near the bottom of my list get it because she can't hear marley matlin yes that's right that's another title you couldn't get away with (laughs) oh so she was in she she was in the west wing for a little while wasn't she yeah so she was this was a precursor to the martin sheen reunion Uh, oh yeah i guess it would have been i wasn't making that connection as as quickly as you were but yeah uh i tanya um margot robbie playing tanya harding uh in the uh infamous uh a scandal where they like uh, basically try to break nancy kerrigan's legs they hit her across the knee with uh what i can't remember tire what, iron something like that but it's the whole story about how she and her husband and uh and jeff galuli jeff galuli they try to <laughs> they try to hire somebody to do this and it's it's told as a comedy and a lot of people who reported on this story back when it came out were like you've got to be fucking kidding me making her the hero yeah yeah and then she, then they trotted her out like the actual one yeah at uh Ward she was season. at the fucking premiere yeah yeah but man there were there were some people who were really pissed about this because she was fucking behind it do you like this uh this movie <laughs> it's fun like forget about that it being the actual based reality. on a real story uh it's fun Mar- margot robbie's fantastic in it she's so fucking talented yeah she she's is. so fucking talented man mm-hmm. i mean wolf of wall street was kind of her big break yep it's easy to dismiss margot robbie because she's so so beautiful yeah but she's great but i've 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 mentioned this before i saw when i saw her in whiskey tango foxtrot which is not a good movie Mm. 
um i i thought oh she's actually really good she's i like i wolf of wall street she's good for sure if you you know if you get past all the like craziness of that movie you're mm-hmm. like oh wait she's actually really good in this movie yeah. um whiskey tango for Oxford, and i was like oh, okay it's confirmed she's really good and i tanya basically is the confirmation of that we can't wait to see mary queen of scots too oh yeah It'd me be too dope. uh the lazarus project uh i know i've heard of it i don't know if i've seen it but it's about uh, bringing back the dead. It's it Paul Walker. Is. It is. Well, it's it's this interesting concept, reading about it, where a guy wakes up, he's in some sort of misadventure, and then he wakes up and he's at a psychiatric hospital where he works and starts getting to know his colleagues, and it's basically like a new life for him, but he still remembers his old life. And it may be clumsily executed, it may be shitty, but it, it looks like an interesting premise. It's got Paul Walker and uh, Piper Parabo in it. I like both. They're both easy on the eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mumford. God. Uh, now, I didn't see this. I know Lawrence Kasdan directed this. Mm-hmm. That has uh, Jason Lee in it, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you see Mumford? No. Because this was one of the movies. Like, this is when I first got to Hollywood 27. This movie came out either like a week later or it was like one of the first and I remember, like, kind of wanting to see it, but I never did. No, I never did either. I was it just has probably watching everybody. The again. Yeah. It has Hope Davis, Jason Lee, Alfred Woodard, Prue Taylor Vince, Zoe DeChanel, uh, who I think it's, this is her first gig. Hmm. It was 1999. Uh, Martin Short, David Pamer, Ted Danson, Jason Ritter, Elizabeth Moss, Robert Stack. Like, it's got a, it's got a good pedigree. Yeah. Uh, Paranoid Park. It's another Van Zandt. Uh Oh, it is. It is. I have. I've never seen this. It's got Taylor Momsen in it. <laughs> there you go. Taylor, uh, Mo- what happened to Taylor Momsen, man? Well, yeah. she's in uh, the uh, the band. The um, is that, is that still going? The Pretty Reckless. Yeah. I was going to say they, we stopped talking about her, and that's what happened. Right? Okay. All right. Because yeah, it's been two years since I think I've even heard her name. Um. Then we have uh, the 2016 remake of Pete's Dragon. I never saw that. I never saw that either. That one it. came and went pretty quick. Yeah, right? it did. It was in the, the the little boys running through the jungle summer. Yes, it was. Did it make a bunch of money? Do you remember? No, no. it made it made decent money, but not what they were hoping. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that movie deserves to be cursed, doesn't oh, it? Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we know that uh, Jesse Malton loves this movie, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Um, yeah, mm. I've never uh, seen this. No, I haven't either. Um, then the <laughs> Seven Brides for Seven Seven Minute Abs, man. <laughs> <laughs> seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Uh, somebody makes uh, Six Brides for Six Brothers, then you're in trouble. <laughs> no, not not six. Seven. Seven's the number, man. Um, it's like dreaming of Gorgonzola. Yeah. There's a. There, uh, now, this came out this year, too. The Shack, right? <laughs> yeah, it yeah, last yeah. year. It came, it came out like in, end of last year, beginning of this year. Yeah. Oh, my God. Did you ever see this, like, even accidentally? I uh, saw t- five minutes of it on accident when I was tied to a chair. Uh, is this uh, Sam Wa- uh, Sam, yeah, uh, Sam Worthington? Worthington. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Sam it's Waters. got a great cast. It's uh, uh, Octavia Spencer, Octavia right? Octavia Spencer's in it. I just... Uh, I didn't make that movie for me. <laughs> no, definitely not. Even the trailer's just covered in schmaltz. Oh, you yeah. Know? Oh, my uh, God. Then the Sisters Brothers, which I know we did in a fall preview. Uh, I, I haven't seen it. Me neither. It's, I, I think it's gotten good reviews so far, but uh, our buddy Larange uh, tweeted out that uh, he hated it. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. And that's a jingle all the way, notwithstanding. Like, he's got some pretty, he's pretty got good. pretty good taste. And, uh, well, Life Aquatic. He actually may not have good taste. <laughs> 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 Thank God he's an excellent musician. Yes. <laughs> uh then uh to all the boys i've loved before i've never seen this either you haven't seen this is like the the shit right right? yeah yeah everybody's talking about it it's the new hotness um i'll probably watch it if i get a a spare moment on netflix so you know it's one of those cultural touchstones apparently of the the last year that uh, everybody talks about all right um and then you have some special mention for tv portlandia of course with uh about what eight nine seasons or something like that yeah and i can probably pick out my favorite parts of it and make five excellent <laughs> it's seasons like that show it's a, that's what that show is right it's uh there's a lot of like just like okay all right and then something awesome will happen <laughs> no, yeah 
<laughs> and uh, my my favorite is the the Eddie Vedder tattoo one that Carrie Brownstein's got. The, the every time this, her boyfriend looks at it, it's like. <laughs> 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 the other thing everybody should at least youtube this uh the the scene with kumail nanjani where he's he's a waiter at like a like a fucking tgi fridays or mm-hmm. something like that and he keeps naming off these progressively more ridiculous items like you know dynamite poppers or something like that oh. and he's like it, it, do you want do you want to like bourbonize that and he's like what's that it's like where we pour like a glass of bourbon all over <laughs> <laughs> it's just re- patently ridiculous it's fucking great though awesome. uh there's also um uh, bates motel which i've never seen that's vera formiga isn't it She's yeah it. and i kind of uh, want to watch this and the kid from the good doctor um uh freddie highmore oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah yeah uh apparently that's been that's uh, gotten a lot of good reviews a lot of people mm-hmm. like that that mm-hmm. show i've never seen it rihanna was on the uh the psycho themed episode she oh played, yeah she played the janet lee characters oh yeah yeah oh that's cool and then uh gravity falls which is a cartoon right yeah we've gotten a lot of people asking us to talk about gravity falls i've never seen it i've never seen it either tj miller did voice on it yeah it's on, i think it was on the disney channel or like disney xd or whatever the hell it is mm-hmm. but it's where like uh some kids go to stay with their grandfather and they start unraveling the mysteries of this town in Gravity Falls, Oregon. And it's got a super cult following. Yeah, like, yeah. People are really, really into this. I just haven't had a chance to check yeah, it out. I'm sure it's either. great. Um, all right. Well, that'll that'll probably be it. We have run through or- Oregon. Oregon? Oregon. Oregon, yeah. You filled a whole episode. Good for you. <laughs> you filled us with your Oregon. Yeah, that's right. Jeez, correct. Uh, I love it. I love uh, this. Yeah. <laughs> um... Uh, that'll do it for this week. Keep going to uh, Sincast presented by CinemaSins on Facebook, our CinemaSins Twitter, SoundCloud, Reddit. There's a lot of places that, to uh, go and talk about this episode. And plus, we have a Patreon. Yeah, yeah, man. Our members at Patreon get some perks. Yeah. They get to see all our shit, hear all our shit early. Like the Infinity War video that they got to see yesterday, that the only, public only got today. They got to see Infinity War, our video for Infinity War. I mean, that's a that's a big thing, man. Yeah. Because... Uh, as we've seen, people are, are looking at it and uh, probably have some opinions about it. And, yep. and getting access to that early is very cool. Yeah. Sign up. We've got a lot of fun things happening. We're going to bo- we're gonna post some bonus content from Sincast uh, later on this month. We're going to do a monthly hangout in December. We've got Sin Week coming up in March. Sin Week. We cannot get more excited for this thing. We've already uh, had some good, good response from this and can't wait to see you guys and give you a bunch of extra content just for being a member of patreon yep uh that'll do it for this week it's chris Atkins and jeremy scott and barrett share we'll see you next time thanks for listening comment on our episodes on our soundcloud page check us out on youtube twitter facebook and reddit and be sure to visit cinemasends.com I'm glad. I'm glad that the the YouTube, um, you know, trophy department decides to change the size of that. They 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 get the next one's gonna be purple. Yeah, the next one will be an octagon. <laughs> it's it's got to be just a constant looking for cheaper materials or a cheaper yeah. supplier or somebody that can make them faster. That's or, probably what it is because I remember when they sent that. Uh, I think it was it was either that one can't remember which one it was but uh i remember getting that package on the on the uh front porch and then uh so like uh i saw the package i was like oh fuck what is this but i was like "Ooh, it's heavy that means it's not a fucking yeah. court summons <laughs> or it's a really bad it's a really one. bad court summons <laughs> he's a weird two years we've had him and he's still like doing like exploring new behaviors and places he's been too scared to go and he's a weird is this the adam driver cat yes <laughs> he looks exactly like adam driver uh, a lot of people have said that for some reason he does have that i didn't realize that, stoic yeah i didn't realize adam driver had such a face but he's got a face type he's, he's got, got like a, his own face type he does he's, he's he, they broke the mold when they, when they made him it's a big nose but it's not like a super like a tom cruise nose like it's a it's in proportion but everything is everything is just like angular mm-hmm. you who's know? this adam driver 
No, I mean somebody who looks like Adam. Just cat. My cat. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess so. I guess that makes sense. Not Zach, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've got a little Christmas to talk about today. Yeah. I also have I. Before we start officially, mm-hmm. I don't really have. I have kind of a record worn, and really only one. I don't have a recommend and a worn. Mm-hmm. So in place of that, I was going to throw out. Um, a stupid fan theory I have for the next Avengers movie that I can't stop thinking about. All right. And I didn't know if you guys would be okay with that or not. I am. Yes. All right. I'm all about stupid fan theories because I'm going to talk a little bit about Infinity War. I had a very Marvel weekend. Ooh. Hey, we can talk about how the the video is. We can make reference to the video because now it's alive. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Now it's I can't wait. I'm really, I'm like as excited about this video as I've been about any other video for a while. The Infinity War video? Yeah, Me just too, dude. so I watched curious it. about it. I watched it twice this morning. I can't remember the last time I liked a video. It's pretty rare that I like a video so much that I watch it even after it's long. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, Just be- just for my own entertainment. Yeah. Did you watch any of the Happy V, like, uh, like movie or video? I watched the, the Since video. I didn't watch the movie. I've never seen the movie. The movie is so fucking beautiful. It is so... I, it's gorgeous. I saw it in New York. I remember... Uh, one of it was one of the first i guess that was the first christmas that i was out in new york mm-hmm. and i remember because that was a, a late night like all those movies are and i was like man this movie is beautiful it is and i was like almost sort of tricked into thinking it was good i did too yeah because and it's so, so that's why that was, that was why i liked that one about how like maybe it deserved the oscar <laughs> or whatever <laughs> and uh but like uh it was like that. I was like, I was like, it's funny, man. I think everything is gorgeous here. I just don't think I'm liking. This. No, it's not a good movie. Yeah. It's just beautifully shot. And then it and came out with happy rendered. fucking feet too. Oh Jesus! Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Miley, <laughs> <laughs> um, that new song she do, does with Ronson. Yeah, nothing breaks like a heart. I don't hate that song. Have you seen the video? Yes, it's okay. No, it's, there's some butts in there. Uh, there's some there's some skin. Here's the thing. I'm torn because you know I got a Miley thing. I want Miley to be Miley. All the different shades that that entails, mm-hmm. and all that that entails. But I realized listening to that song, she could easily right turn into like a Stevie Nicks impersonator career. Like the vo- the voice has begun to creep into. I've, you see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like. I don't think he talks about it much anymore, but in the early days of Harry Connick Jr.'s success, he was pretty open about the fact that he didn't think he was that much of a singer. He just grew up imitating Frank Sinatra. Mm. Uh, He loved Frank Sinatra. And so when he started singing himself, what came naturally to him was to sing like Sinatra. So the Harry Connick sound is half Sinatra, half his own voice or what have you. Mm. I think Miley's starting to slip into that maybe a little accidentally. I don't think she always sounded like Stevie Nicks, but when I heard that song, I was like, it's like fucking landslide I'm listening it's, it's to. It's real low register. Like, she's really migrating down. It has that nasaliness. Mm-hmm. That, you know what I'm talking and about? she's I already don't... got that scratchy, I've been smoking too many cigarettes already Yeah, type of Rasp. voice anyway. Yeah. 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 By the way, what's going on with them? Stevie Nicks? Uh, she uh, she fired Lindsey Buckingham. Yeah, and right? he sued her. Yeah. 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 They hate each other now. I Again. think they've always hated each other. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't know that was. I mean, a yeah, opinion. it's just like well, it, they the, stay together because they make so much fucking money when Fleetwood Mac tours. The uh, the whole album rumors is based on how much friction they had. Oh yeah, oh that yeah, whole album. Everybody hated each other. Yeah, <laughs> they all hated each other, and they still went into a into a, a studio and made that out. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Actually. Yeah, it is. And then she did that My Dead Pets thing, and that kind of brought her into this psychedelic place, yeah. formed this connection with the, <laughs> not the Screaming Trees guys. Who, Flaming Lips. Flaming Lips. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming Trees. <laughs> and, and then now she's, you know, the Malibu album was a, a whole different sound that uh-huh. took me a while to get used to, and I eventually really liked. And it sounds like she's still kind of in that place with this single, but she's just guest appearing. But I think she has been recording. I'd be curious to see what she does next. Yeah, Mark Ronson songs are other people's songs, though. It's like... Uptown Funk is a Mark, Mark Ronson song, but it's not a fucking Mark Ronson. It's a Bruno Mars song. I I I am smack in the middle of this discussion. I think that the people who produce and mix and DJ these songs probably deserve some more recognition than sure they used to get before this era. But I also don't think they need to be on the front cover of everything. Yeah, I don't need to know what a DJ Khaled song is when... He contributes three percent of shouting in the background. Well, yeah. yes, and maybe and, he's and doing the beats all and all DJ that stuff. DJ Khaled, exactly. but it, like Rihanna, 
like uh, wild wild thoughts. That's a Rihanna song. Even though there's another featured guest on there, like that's a Rihanna song. Yeah, you're not going to associate that with DJ Khaled, even though he keeps reminding you that he's on the show. <laughs> Too late to apologize. Too late. <laughs> oh, it's One Republic. I thought it was One Republic. One Republic. Yeah, that's but yeah, right. that's a Timbaland track. Timbaland did that. Um, that's got like a lot of the Timbaland feature, like the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. That's going to be fun for your ears later when you're editing this. Mm-hmm. Every time I accidentally do that kind of shit on a narration, I'm always like, into like, oh, I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> I'll like, I'll mess up that up and I'll go, fuck. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, sorry. I just scream fuck in your ears. You didn't know that was coming. <laughs> yeah, I may have to do this later because. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> They have to do this later. <laughs> in the privacy it's of not my coming own. up. It wants me to install an app. <sighs> it, I can use like three percent. I was going to say we can't use yeah. most of that. Well, you're definitely not going to use this. Um, <laughs> no, because uh, <laughs> it's good to know. It's kind of like when I saw what appears to be Brian Cranston in the middle of one of those Hobbit movies. There's like, <laughs> there's like a big crowd scene. A dude looks exactly like Cranston is in there. I looked up Google and everything. Nobody was either. They're not saying anything or he's uh, or he's I don't know. I mean, that's guess it's, uh, I mean, or he's definitely not Brian Cranston. It's just somebody who looks like it. Um, but, uh, I actually looked it up and there was like, I think there might've been a Reddit board that came up that somebody said that looked like Brian Cranston in the end of that Hobbit scene or whatever. And, but I was like, that makes sense. It would make a lot of sense for him to just be randomly in a crowd, but yeah. Anyway, I want to sex you up. Tick tock. Don't stop. 